What's going on, everybody? Cali Death Podcast back once again, episode 64. Thanks again for coming and hanging out with us this week. We love to be here for you guys. We love you guys coming back. All the new listeners do all the shit that we love. Like, subscribe, notification bells and all that shit. Tell your friends. Help us keep this thing growing. It's still growing every single week, which is awesome. Um, here with two resident homies, Casey and Joseph. We're missing Joel tonight. He's under the re- weather, but uh, we'll see him next week. Um, before we get into everything this week with Chase and Westmoreland and Robert Brown, we're going to uh, plug Battle Forge Coffee once again. Our homies over at Battle Forge Coffee in... Uh, you know, I've been plugging it the last few weeks. It's our friends and brothers and deeds of flesh company. They've been working on it for a while. They exploded out of their launch. People are talking about it. It's great coffee guys. Like go support that underground fucking real shit. Like we're talking Cali death here. Deeds of flesh are the fucking pioneers of the shit. None of this would be here without those motherfuckers. So go buy that coffee, drink that shit up bump some trading pieces, bump some fucking, you know, whatever, just get fucking hyped on that shit. And uh, battleforgecoffee.com, I think they said, uh, Mike told me that if you buy an order, you're going to get another promo code for the next order where it's like, I don't know, 30, 40% off or something like that. I can't remember. So you guys get it going. Let's help these guys really get get a foundation going for the business. And uh, yeah, buy that shit, battleforgecoffee.com. All right, Joseph, you got something too. What up? Uh, So today it's uh, Thursday, January 20th. So tomorrow night, Friday, January 21st, uh, Lost to Lucy, my band that I'm now playing drums for. We're playing uh, Southgate, California, which is in Los Angeles with Inhuman Atrocities. So if you're here in this Friday morning and you want to come out tonight, come check us out. We're going to throw down sick shit. And uh, looking forward to seeing some homies out there. Boom. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Well, uh, without further ado, let's get into this shit. So uh, Chasen Westmoreland from fucking a huge list of sick bands. Dope ass drummer. Um, He was going to be, he is our guest this week, but last minute decided he wanted to bring a homie on, Robert Brown, who is the um, American guitar player for russia slaughter currently um what up guys like thanks for fucking coming on i I love that this is cool that like you were just getting too random not random random to us like you know for me not knowing you guys and i'm I'm gonna be able to talk to two different guys right now that are friends i just i like this party atmosphere it's like we're we're kicking it in the living room and casey's like yo (laughs) Fucking Jason said he's coming through and he's bringing a homie and it's just like, all right, dude, let's fucking do this. Yeah. Cheers, bros. <laughs> Cheers, man. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Appreciate you. Hey, hey, real talk though. Rip, rip, Eric. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, dude, for sure, dude. It's uh that guy f- will forever be embedded in all of this shit, dude. Yeah, he's definitely. Sure. Fucking, you know. Yeah, he team. ran unique leader. Hmm. He took us out on our first full length tour, fucking, you know, signed us and, and, and introduced us to so many people that are still friends and colleagues today. It's just like that man did a lot for a lot of people, dude. So forever RIP Eric, dude. Yeah. Onward. Yep. <laughs> yep. Shit, man. Eric signed my first band. God damn it. <laughs> it's oh, nice. crazy. Which band was that? Uh, it was an older band. It was called um, uh, So This Is Suffering. It was from Cali, um, but Eric like had hit us up. So as much as uh, people want to roast labels and all that type of shit, like I, I give it to him because he was the first to like get my foot in the door with like real shit. You know what I'm saying? Like meeting, getting to tour with bands and shit like that. Uh, you know, all that type of shit. You know, I know uh, Chase does too. You know, Deeds of Flesh, all that type stuff so rip eric but uh anyway y'all y'all go ahead yeah for sure <laughs> dude um yeah love eric dude so uh let's jump with chasing real quick so uh chasing what's going on dude like how we usually i told you this pre-pod um wherever you want to take us dude like take us as far back as you can you know 
what for sure what was what was bumping on the in the living room that that made you want to groove when you were a little kid <laughs> or what was you know like what'd you hear what what drum lick did you hear and you're like oh shit dude what's up with drums you know i want to hear all that well <laughs> it was almost too far back to remember but uh i do remember when i was like three I would watch my dad play bass on this VHS tape that I had. <laughs> it was like this ridiculous band with like these really flamboyant vocalists. There was two dudes called the Checkmates. <laughs> so uh, I would watch that all the time and like act like I was playing bass, you know, at first. And then I broke my bass that my dad got me. I tuned it too tight, popped the bridge, apparently. Oh, so I was like, oh, shit. cool. So drums were the next thing. And like, I just liked it. And uh, my uncle plays drums, too. So he was in the band with my dad on the VHS tape. It's hilarious. Uh, so they both kind of showed me my very first things, you know, and I would actually jam with the tape like later on, like they, they made fun of me forever, but it's true. It's, it's tight. And I feel like that's responsible for why I kind of was interested in, in music. Cause I was like, that's my dad. Totally so, did. Uh, yeah. I, I totally can see it. And, it. and it's cool that like, it was still a thing for you to want to be able to play along to that tape. When yeah. you started being able, being able to play your instrument. So it's like, that shows how much of an influence that, that one tape that both your uncle and your dad probably laugh at all the time. But at the same time, it, it, it dug deep with you at, at a certain yeah. age. I looked it up. Your, your dad's like a famous uh, professional bass player, right? Depending on like who you ask, I guess. Yeah. Like <laughs> us, you know, like, yeah we're kind of famous like depending on who you ask but so, yeah he is he's played with the four tops and uh oh, some other old motown bands like the pointer sisters and uh like some smooth jazz dudes so he he rips though he's really good man it's killer fuck yeah dude that, that motown is what i say was where i started paying attention like, that's tight my, wow. my parents playing motown around the house and i just like yeah, these songs are fucking great, but I'm only like, yeah. you know, five or six years old, you know? Yeah. So, sorry, continue. I feel that. Well, no, man, it just continued on. Like, I remember. Where'd you getting, get your first kit? Um, I had one when I was three, two. Oh, I damn. Had, Shit. I think there was stuff just around, you know, like if I didn't have my own at that age, I could play another one that was set up that was way too big for me. Um, but the, I can remember the first time I got like a real drum set that wasn't like a Frankenstein kit. Uh, it was when I was 13 and uh, I lived upstairs and I remember there was like some going on on the porch and I looked out the window and there's like a drum set there. I was like, Oh shit. Okay. <laughs> so my dad popped up and he's like, Hey, got you a drum set. So that was the oh, first night, cool. like decent one. It was a Pearl export like for a 13 year old or however old I was, I was stoked and it was, it was new, you know, it wasn't like a. So you had played for 10 world. years before you got a set that was like a legit one. You yeah. said you've been playing like Franken sets ever up till then. Yeah. Just piece together stuff. So, all right. I want to know like at what age were you actually like ripping where it was like, um, and and I'm talking about that in between that age of three and thirteen, um, what you were what you were wanting to play, what you could play really good, and when did you start feeling like, oh, okay, this is actually something I can really do? Um, I just liked it so much that I had always been practicing, and so I would say. It, like 11 or 12, you know, like all surrounding middle school and getting that kit. I knew like a lot of people didn't do this all the time. You know, my friends would just play outside or play video games and um, they didn't, they weren't as lucky as I was to have stuff around like that. So I'll definitely say in middle school, when I got to band class, you know, and I was like, Oh, I'm going to play drums for sure. I'm not going to, play trumpet you know i haven't 
been doing this this whole time for nothing. So I already kind of knew. And even in like fifth grade, I can remember for some reason, vivid memory that I, I would say to myself, like, I'm going to go on tour one day because my dad would be gone Mm -hmm. for a long ass time sometimes and send postcards and shit. So I still have a box of them. And uh, some of them get me hella emotional, man. Like they'll say like, I hope you get to see the world one day, son. And, and I'm just like, oh, shit, I, I did. So it's like a crazy full circle thing. Nice. But yeah, definitely middle school. Damn. Uh, what did, how often did you jam with your dad? Not enough, man. He's busy as yeah. hell. But uh, man, when we do, it's like, it's tight. I've only performed with him like a couple times, but one of the times was at the Palms Casino here in Vegas. And uh, it was like a seven minute song with a drum solo. And I was like looking at him the whole time because bassist keeps the time in all music besides metal. I feel like unless your bass player is ripping shout outs to Adam, man, he's (laughs) like really killer. So it's like not every day that someone's that gnarly on bass and it's loud and you can follow him, like play with a lot of good bass players, though. But Adam is definitely crushing but so yeah i, mean, I never really cool, thought you know? of it that way dude so that's yeah. that's how it's looked at is the bassist is actually keeping time yeah the drummer and the <laughs> bass player are supposed to be like besties you know yeah yeah in totally metal, i see that but i just didn't know that, that the drummer is following the bassist when i'm always thinking yeah. the bassist following the drummer probably vice versa which is nice to get that like the codependence <laughs> of each other Sick, yeah. Dude. Okay. So in the middle school, things are starting to get serious. You get the new kit. Um, fuck, you must have been like floored by the fact that you had a, a you know, a matching brand new kit, or maybe not brand new, but a kit that's fucking like legit. It was tight. Hell yeah. Definitely dude. way uh cleaner on my playing. I could tell that things were I was like, oh, I can do little fills and stuff just was a lot easier, especially when I got new pedals. I started doing double bass more so when I was 11 or 12, and then I probably got a pedal like, but what's weird is I can remember I had this really shitty Gibraltar pedal and it was a double pedal, but I was so young. I didn't really, I I wasn't like hitting it, you know, but it was there. And I remember getting a new pedal changed the game too. I got the DW 5000s. And I was like, oh, oh, and I was like doing 16th now and stuff. And I was p- picking up little things. So, yeah, gear does make a little bit of a difference sometimes. If your gear is so crap that like mm-hmm. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. like gunked up oil on your on your center <laughs> cam, it's like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> totally, dude. But that that would that's what uh you know, calcifies you as an artist because you had to go through that that first decade with dealing with a kit like that, which you didn't even realize that you were just building up and building up and building up this this thing to where when you finally sat down on something real, you're like, oh shit, I didn't realize like I'm further ahead than I thought I was. Yeah, it was. And then it was like, having a like you're in the hyperbolic chamber on on dragon ball z and you're trying to play drums and then you come out of it and you get to play drums and you're like yeah oh cool nice <laughs> yeah yeah you you you're like a ufc fighter you trained at high altitudes yeah <laughs> <laughs> so i was ready for it and then blink 182 was happening at that time so i was like trying to be travis barker you know so I've what how old are you chasing by the way i never asked you that right now 32 okay all right so blink 182 is popping off you're in middle school were you in san diego area at the time no las vegas always okay but then when you joined up with burning the masses later are they from san diego area yeah okay so jumping ahead then so what did you do in high school between you know that middle school era yeah i was kind of going to be asking like when's when's this uh, did you have bands before? Yeah. When did you, you find when did you find dudes that you started jamming with? 
Um, that was in middle school a little bit too. I started meeting the people in band class and like having little stupid bands. But uh, yeah, I remember the dude from Panic at the Disco was in our jazz band and he played wow. drums really well. Like he mm-hmm. rips. It was, it was kind of tight, the singer. And uh, so he like made me think about things too. I was like, he's ripping solos and like improv and stuff. So it was, it, it came together nicely for me because then my dad also was like pushing me along and my uncle was like, yeah, you know, so it's, it's just, when I think about it, very smooth upbringing, high school was probably the rocky part because I hated school and I ditched and uh, I wasn't really in bands in high school. And then I dropped out actually, and I got my GED and like started working when I was 15. And then I got in bands and stuff. Like I had this metal band with my friend from high school and then our vocalist filled in for burning the masses. So that's how that came about. And then we all played a show together. My local band burning the masses, discreet brain drill played. It was sick. And, uh, So that was like how they saw me play drums. And then my vocalist convinced them to get me an audition, even though they had this drummer kid, he was younger. um, So he would have had like a a little tougher time going on tour. So all that happened so perfectly. And they liked this video I sent and uh, I started doing stuff when I was 19. I'd worked like a couple jobs and then started So Burning the Masses was like the the first legit gig you had gotten? Yeah. And that's at 19? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what was the name of the the band that opened up for Burning? Um, The band. Yeah, your local band. (laughs) We were called Evade the Swarm. Evade the Swarm, (laughs) dude. That's a sick sick mid-2000s band name right there yeah it was so like metalcore like we were trying black dahlia i think i saw they were at that uh that when we were young festival i think i saw them on (laughs) there oh my god (laughs) real quick sorry we stepped over something because it's something that we always like to talk about too is the first time you actually heard metal like who introduced it to you and what was it so if we get past like Slipknot and System of a Down, I know that's a lot of people's firsts and that was mine too. But then I heard Black Dahlia, the old painted black cover was the first blast beat that I ever heard. And I was like, this is fucked up. And I was like, I'm going to be, I'm going to hit this. I was like, I have to hit this. Like I, I can do this, but I, but I was like, I can't do this, but I was like, I can do that. You know what I mean? Like you're scared, but you jump in. Yeah. But yeah, man, it was funny. It was like Black Dahlia as I lay dying at the gates, like all from my homie and my band. <laughs> so my it wasn't, it wasn't, there wasn't band. like a gradual thing. It was just like, boom, here's the yeah. fucking here's In high the school, goods, dude. I just had this dude like dumping CDs on me and I would just like be on the bus like, wow. So I had a lot of metal core when I first started listening to metal. Then I had to track back and go check out like Pantera and, you know, yeah, I, yeah. I had heard Metallica obviously, but I remember I didn't even know Pantera songs very well when I first like started hearing metal. So it took a while. I was like a newbie metal person. Well, I mean, it's like you have to have that friend or that bro- the older brother or the older brother of the friend that yeah passes it down, dude. And it's, it's like the torch, dude. Yep, it's fun. I'm thankful. Like now I can rip some metal songs and it's actually really fun genre to play live. It's uh, totally. <laughs> probably the most fun on um, drums you can get. Like Rob seen me play with uh like some funny other genre bands and it's just so it's just not the so same, boring. it's not as hype. No, it's, like, it's not exciting. It's just, it's, it's not just like, like, I don't, yeah, it's hard to strive. It's just not the same feeling. Like I, I know it's not as like, like money wise and all this other shit. Yeah. Other styles make more, but like, as a man, you don't feel the, the power. I don't know how to describe it. Like no, if I play sure, an R and B set or something, like 
yes, it's more real music. Yes, it's better. You know what I'm saying? Like, technically to the average person, I'll be like, there's more money in that and all that. But like, I don't feel that like... I'm not describing describe it. It doesn't ra- radiate that energy I want. Totally, you know what I'm saying? It's like it, it literally without e- it, it's not your choice. It's going to just like it's going to squeeze the the angst and the anger out. Yeah. While you're listening, you know, it's like you're being rang out like a like a like a wet washcloth and and all that like anger it's like a therapy dude it's totally a natural therapy for guys like us we don't need to go talk to somebody about our problems we go to a show and we bang our fucking head or we get up on stage and we get the fuck down you know hell yeah and 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 i think that's why there's a very very high percentage of chill motherfuckers in the metal Mm. scene because it really is like this this unspoken Mm. therapy that we're all in it together you know it's like a community of of people who are like yeah there's there's all this bullshit that we always have to deal with but we found something that you know forces us to let the steam off yeah. I, I question this i question this and chase will agree if in a parallel universe if metal made millions right like how pop did how many people would play it yeah, you know I'm saying that would yeah. be different because a lot of people won't play it because, you know what I'm saying? It's not this or there's no there's no money in it, you know, or whatever. Or like, you know, you've heard all the shit. Yeah, yeah. Like if metal, if the government was playing metal musicians millions per month to play like Metalocalypse were on TV, you'd you know, see like Britney Spears. You'd see yeah, it, like if it was on that equivalent, Cannibal I feel Corpse like more dudes collaboration. Play it, it's just like. There's that holding you back part because people are like, oh, you know, you know, all that other shit. What about what do you think so, about uh, what do you think about the 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 state of that parallel universe too? like the, the, Well, I don't want to step on chasing. Let, let him talk first. And, well, and I was I'm just going to finish that off with true. saying they're probably <laughs> they're probably a much chiller planet if everybody is playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It makes I me mean, think like, do they want to play metal for money and are they better than us for money? I can yeah. they harder yeah. than you because they make like if I was getting paid millions, would I practice more? Mm, yeah, you would. You fuck yeah, you would. Yes, you would. <laughs> yeah, would you, you pull would. Ours? I know okay. that for a fact. No, this is like was challenging me up. for my chair. Dude, that's like a really funny thought that I've had too, that I think is really actually great that you guys brought that up. So imagine that, like like Olympics or something, you know? Yeah. yeah. So imagine they're just like, all right. The, like the top metal drummer, like George Colias or whatever, like, you know, yeah, blah, yeah. Blah, blah. it's like, he's the gold medal winner. Mm-hmm. Like, like, you know, this year for like the, da, 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 you know, drumming Olympics and all this kind of stuff or whatever. Dude, know. it would be way and more sponsorships. Insane, like <laughs> it would, cereal box. Yeah, dude. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> on, on like the Wheaties cover, you know, yes. yeah. <laughs> Colias, holding up. A, it like, should a, be like, like that. Like, like yeah. And like every commercial is George, and he's just like, Yeah, 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 yeah that'll exactly. be funny. Even for like <laughs> stuff that has nothing to do with drums. <laughs> Check out this deodorant, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> Holy, okay. a life like, insurance commercial with him yeah. on it. He's like cameoing in The Simpsons and shit. <laughs> hey, man, like, We're almost getting there with metal. It's getting closer. Yeah, it is getting closer. People talk about it like you go to NAM, NAM is basically like a metal show now like it is very true yeah <laughs> the guitar the area guitar the guitar area. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it is guitar is yeah, yeah. all metal dudes bro like <laughs> the guitar yeah. area was straight high school reunion for me i was like oh my god oh my god oh my god like yeah. <laughs> everywhere i looked it was another homie i haven't seen in 10 years <laughs> epic dude nice true. yeah i met uh one of my i joined one of my new bands because i met their you know the the main guitarist at nam that year so that's tight new bands have started just from yeah. meetups at nam for sure oh for sure Chasing. especially if everybody's in california damn i'm not even far away so yeah <laughs> yeah exactly it Vegas. Makes, yeah makes nice, sense. do you play guitar too man or like no you know? me no i play keyboard though and do clean yeah he can play actually. guitar a little bit <laughs> oh weird. it comes he, out oh he, yeah. he's played my sugar before <laughs> that's the rhythm part <laughs> i saw yeah i saw you recently posted something about uh a project a solo project casing or chasing yeah. right mm-hmm. where you did everything 
Yeah, that's and really my dad good. Plays bass, oh, and I got Rob on too, which is oh, sick. really oh yeah. sick. Wow, dude, nice. Very post prog, very non metal, but it's fun though. So what's that called again for the listeners? Ghost of the Universe. Yeah. So this is technically a Ghost of the Universe episode we're doing right now. Since you guys <laughs> nah. are both in it. Dude, that shit's really good. <laughs> hey, yeah, I, I listen to it. We sick. got two guys that were uh, involved in it, dude. Is that You're... on like a label or is it? No. Okay. It's nice completely like self. Um, nice. I guess we're just trying to DIY it right now. I don't want to. Yeah, yeah. Try to well, shop it's scary to, to it's scary to start your own band nowadays from scratch. It sucks. Mm, for sure. But yeah, it's, it's hard also for the love. So it's you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, I was listening to that and like I, I just looked on Bandcamp, you know, who's who's on there, and then yeah, I saw it was your dad, and then he like landed this nice like major third slide in on one of the notes, he and I'm like, it. damn, that was sick. Very so, nice writing, way yeah. crazier than I would have had. I didn't even try to do bass parts for the songs. I was immediately knew he would come through at some point. Yeah, that was dope. So your dude. dad, your dad plays all the bass on it. Yeah. Oh fuck, dude, that's so fucking cool, dude. It's tight, dude. Yeah, no, <laughs> I was like, emotional watching him record. I was like, <laughs> well, dude, I would be too, dude. And it's like you created so something, cool. and your and your 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 dad's helping yeah. you, you know, yep. bring it to fruition with his talent. And it's it's his talent that got you into it in the first place. It's like yeah. this whole thing that keeps folding in on itself, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 and uh, it's, it's super sick, dude. And um, but let's get back on the timeline a little bit. So, yeah. burning the masses was uh, your first real gig. So, take us through that a little bit before, and and what takes what that takes you to next. So that was like just a lot of touring experience and we got to go to Europe and stuff for my first time and uh, toured with some really sick bands back then. Like the last tour I think I can remember was like this cattle decapitation one with sons of Aurelius, which they nice. were super tight. Yeah. And that's our homes actually carries in odious now, dude. That's tight. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. Th- I did see that. That's hella cool. So they all ripped and uh, yeah. So then burning the masses kind of got stagnant. Like we, I remember stopped doing tours. It's kind of my fault. I had like a, I broke these two bones right here on the bottom of my mm. fingers and I couldn't do this dying fetus tour in Europe. It sucked. And uh so then, like, after that, we kind of stopped doing stuff. It sucked. And then pretty sure it was going to be Enfold Darkness next and Oceano close to that. Those kind of times. And Fallujah One Tour did with them. So it all just kind of uh, snowballed, you know. Like, I would take a little bit of time off and work a job or something, but then – get hit up by somebody so ah fuck working it's whack (laughs) i remember no point it's useless (laughs) (laughs) on your uh on your metal archives page it's got like four bands you played with in 2012 or something like that dude it's like pretty impressive yeah i can't even remember what the years were (laughs) yeah we can't either dude like when you look back on all that show like there's been so many people like you remember this show that show and i'm just like "Ah, no (laughs) (laughs) how much Um, did i drink how much did i smoke that night like did we have to leave like right after the show it's what it is yeah it's probably mostly that dude it's just like popping in popping out you don't make too many deep memories of places but you know it's the it's the fans that were at that show that did did make those deep memories so when they hit you up yeah, I, I want to be able to be like oh yeah dude i remember that place but i can't ever <laughs> you have to try to remember something super specific like a food spot or something that's yeah. how i remember i'm like oh yeah that fucking this place had wieners and coffee milk in <laughs> Providence, rhode island and i was like oh yeah <laughs> fucking wieners <laughs> Yeah. uh but yeah burning uh got got a couple people in the comments talking about it so uh, yeah. that band definitely left an impression for sure that's good to know it was really yeah. weird to go on tour and have like all these people asking about that band and i was like whoa that was a long time ago 
Mm. And people were still like, when are you guys doing stuff? I was like, whoa. Not too late, dude. Watching, man. I know. I was like super surprised that people remembered or cared or so it did make me feel a lot better. Yeah. Uh, It's because the members can't stick it out. That's why they don't (laughs) see the vision. When you're younger like that, you can't make it to 10 years, man. You give up already. Yeah, there was some weird stuff and then later stuff too. So we we messed it up. I will say we did. (laughs) We weren't getting hit up anymore. I was like, damn, like I don't think we're getting offers anymore, really. What happened? And that's that's how it can happen with some bands. Yeah. When you when you get you know, kind of big or any kind of commercial when you're like that young, like that didn't happen to me. So I'm just kind of, I'm always thinking about what it would have been like. And I'm like, I don't know if I was mature enough to like carry that on. No, you know? you're not. You never yeah. are. It makes yeah. no sense though to you because you don't even know that anybody cares. You're just like in the van when it's broken down and you're at the shows playing for 12 people. Yeah. So you're like, no one. Like I said, us, you don't see the vision. You did. don't see the vision. No, you can't. No, see you it, don't. Man. No, nope. you don't know that people care. And then it's starting a later business, on, it's starting a business. Yeah. Think of the McDonald's guy. Yeah, yeah that's true, though. No, it's yeah. very true. You're not going to you're like the shows aren't a thousand people right away. So I'm just going to quit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that's human nature, though, right? Yeah, it's, it is. It is. It's give up across the board there. with anything. It's like yeah. if it isn't put on a plate right there, it's like nah, there, I don't want to go for it. There's a famous yeah. book that me and uh, Jason talked about. It's called 50 Laws of Power. And it talks about there's this one quote in it uh, where it says that people can't finish the same thing that they've started. Like they can't do the same thing every day. You know, like if you do the same thing, let's say you went to work and went home and saved money every day. You know, like people have to do something different and like switch it. And they said that and then they wonder why people are unhappy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? People aren't happy because you don't stick with the same thing and finish it as you like to do. You know, you steer off and do all this shit. And yeah. It's, it's like, and it. what's funny, it's like it's in our nature to, to find a homeostasis where we can coast. But at the same time, our mind and our 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 soul is telling us, no, dude, we're not going to coast right now. Get the fuck up and do something. But it's that yeah, 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 yeah. inner battle that we're having and most of the time people just go with the eh, i'm mm-hmm. gonna do shit especially hey, i'll say this much man since we're all dudes here especially as men you know what i'm saying like you deal with stuff in your mind and then when you're in a band jason knows like all these negative thoughts come to quit and like get, go work give up you know what i'm saying you're your parents you're this you're that uh all these people just telling you not to do it so a lot of people give in and that's what breaks up the band that's what's broken up a lot of my old bands too. Like, uh, you know, one or two members are like, ah, oh, that's it. I'm done, man. And then it fucks the whole band up. I've even you known. Know. I'm yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, he's admitting it. See, I'm just like, dude, it's, it's wear and tear on you, on your mental Yeah. Skin. But, Every but days is, uh, me and Jason figured I mean, it out though, that, that that's not the way to live. Like being a, a working man like that forever is not good because we figured out that, you know, workforce doesn't give a fuck about you. You're well, just for us. It's not for good. us, not for everybody, but for average guys like us that are musicians, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't, yeah, you're not trying to go work for the man anymore. Mm-hmm. You, know you guys are too talented and not get to you know and also you really that can't people. because you got to be able to drop and get on tour whenever you want you that so and, like, and keep your skill level up how the fuck do we like mm-hmm. like be all sick on the instrument but then we're working 24 hours a day very true 16 very hours true. we can't he chasing couldn't be sick at doing death metal drums working a job mm-hmm. oh but you totally. want him up there playing sick <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that's anyway. true. It, when yeah. I've toured at my most, when I'm doing back to back tours and I've done a bunch that year, I didn't work. I was yeah. broke. I was broke at home and then balling out on tour. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, you want to go back on tour because you're like, dude, I'm going to have money again. Let's go. Right, right. Oh, right, right. <laughs> That's sick. There should be like an app where like each like drum hit equals like a penny. 
Oh my god. So you're like fucking <laughs> like, blasting just like what is it? How, <laughs> what, <laughs> uh, how, so how, how like much 20 more? minutes I'm gonna have like like a dollar. Here. I was about to say <laughs> watch the tempos, you go, like, watch the know. tempos go up even further <laughs> yeah, in yeah. metal. Yeah, yeah, it's like 350 BPM, it. dude. Yep. These motherfuckers are getting their pennies. There's like, like some dude on YouTube like spinning his sticks, just like I got like four million on Bitcoin, <laughs> fucking like <laughs> from <laughs> four million in Bitcoin, dude. That would be amazing. Yeah. What's well, my damn. tally? What's my pay tonight? How many <laughs> yeah, dude. Did I get? Yeah, dude, dude. Death metal like bands should just all get paid in like Bitcoin now. It turns into this whole thing. Like now, you guys are okay. So think, you... like, wait, real quick. I was gonna say, what is this? A chase in Westmoreland set? How many snare hits would be in that set? That's a, a good trail question, set, bro. There's a lot, dude. There's a fucking yeah. lot. I saw it, dude. Because I can't do gravity blast, so I do like these fake ones off the symbol. And right there, I'm like, that's a bunch of hip. Yeah. It's like, it's a typewriter set, man. Really yeah, is. dude. I, I would love to know that number. <laughs> I'm sure it's going to blow my fucking socks off as soon as I see it. <laughs> that would be cool. You could have like a clicker counter guy on the side, like counting. <laughs> yeah, like, like he's counting pitches. <laughs> counting <laughs> pitches. Dude, he's the gravelly. You could gravelly have two, yeah. Shit, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude, seriously. You have those. Those we have counters. They have At the end of each thing. Yeah, exactly. Like the, the drumometer. The, yeah, the drumometer. Yeah. Like a boxer guy, boxer counter. How many hits? <laughs> <laughs> At the end of each show, baseball, he's counting pitches and shit. They're like, yeah. oh, you hit That's like you know, nine hundred and blah 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 base hits. Like you know, you get like a check for you know twenty seven dollars. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you play with Prince, you get more money for less hits. Yeah, uh, yeah, totally. So if you dude. do a fill, you get docked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know exactly. Yeah, yeah. A, a bonus is a missed snare. You miss yeah. it on like yeah. less is more literally. Like, yep. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh uh, shit. Let's get back to the timeline, guys. Well, yeah, I wanted to ask, man. So oh, yeah, we got some fan questions too, right? You want to yeah, squeeze well, one of those in? One of the yeah. so it's yeah. just someone mentioned Hate Eternal, um, and uh, I I just wanted to ask about it too. So I don't know if there was something between uh, the bands you mentioned and and getting the Hate Eternal gig, but I definitely knew we had some interest in that. So you want to catch us up to that and how that came about? By the way, you're the fourth you're the fourth Hate Eternal drummer we've had on the show. That's right? true. Or is this fifth? Right. No, it's fourth. Damn. Yeah, yeah, we had we had Tim, Derek, um, uh, and Hannes. So Sick. oh, so three. So yeah, number four. Boom. Yeah. Well, there was just a lot of touring happening, like on and off. And I remember a really important thing happened where I played for Enfold Darkness in Fallujah on one tour. And everybody made this huge deal about it, you know, because I did like back to back sets and uh, they put each band on Summer Slaughter on these guest nights. So it was the Bale Amaya, Periphery, Between the Buried and Me, Cannibal Corpse one with Cerebral Boar. There's a bunch of sick bands on it. And uh, there was like heroes of mine coming up to me and they were like, wait, you played in the other band didn't you? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm playing in both. And they were like, tight. And I was like, okay, this is a really big deal right now. Mm -hmm. I could tell that my popularity was going up a little bit and I was kind of tripping out. And I was like, okay, this is, this was a good decision. I knew uh, exhausting myself would be the smart move here. It was um, because even after that, there was video of both bands. Um, so there was like this thing on YouTube happening, you know, and then, um, getting in Igean, I did a tour with them and I remember I just get, I think I, I got a text or an email from Eric and he had gotten my name from people like referencing me. So I was super flattered for like from that. And, uh, that was how the hate eternal thing happened. I did have to audition. It was a crazy three day audition and, uh, I'll say it, man, on day two, I wouldn't have got it. If I went home on day two, I wouldn't have got it. Day three was, it's like a Rocky story. <laughs> on day three, I was pissed. And I was like, I sucked ass yesterday. And I know Eric thinks I sucked ass yesterday. So I'm not going to do that today. And uh, 
I went over this song that I liked and, and I played it and Eric was like, well, that's one of the harder songs and you just played it first. And I was like, Oh yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, so that day went a lot better. And at the end of the day, he offered me the spot and, uh, yeah, that was a crazy audition for real. What, what was the song? Lake of blaze was the Sick. song that like, kind of convinced Eric that I wasn't fucking around, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like he could see like a different energy that day. I guess I probably wasn't as nervous, you know, it was day three. Like we were cool now, chilled a little bit, shook off the jitters. That happens to me a lot. I actually had a bad first day with the faceless too. My inner mix was messed up though. That can fuck you up so bad. Oh yeah, that can fuck you up. What I needed to hear. And there was like weird click accents like that Alex had on there. He, he likes to have like accented click and I don't. Um, so once we got stuff kind of more suited to me and how I like it, we played way better. Um, so that like convinced Michael the second day. That's funny, man. Yeah. Sometimes on my first day, I'm just like in my head or even rusty, whatever it may be, but by the second day, I'm like, oh, hell no, we got to get this. Let's go. Nice. Let's go. Yeah, I've been there. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's cool, dude, because it's yeah. like it shows, one, you're a human, and two, yeah. um, you, you, in the face of adversity, you, you reign supreme. You know, Damn, that's you're like, I hope so. <laughs> for real, like you're, you're faced with, with, uh, an enemy in the, you're almost yourself. And then you realize, no dude, that I need to bat this thing down and, yeah. and get it out of the way so I could really shine. And then you do that. Yeah. It's like your emotions up here and you have to like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Push that shit. And then, far, and then afterwards, down. you can be like, oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> yeah. But at that moment, you have to like, all right, let's go. That happened mm-hmm. with Vitriol. You know, it was uh, some scary shows. And it was Dying Fetus and stuff. And I was like, fuck, some packed nights. And I think I did all right. Some nights were, there would be nobody there and I sucked. So <laughs> it just, you know, you know how it is. You never know. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. think I'd be annoyed and weird at a dude who didn't have like the first gig jitters, you know? Like, yeah, that would just be weird. You're like, whoa, dude, what are you gonna pull later? <laughs> right? Yeah. Like mass shooting, probably. What are you gonna tell me you don't like strip clubs? Wait, uh, wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wait, now we're gonna um, talk about strippers first dance jitters. <laughs> oh my god. The Vegas hey, remember, kids hey. know about that. <laughs> hey, remember Gabe when he he screwed us over? <laughs> this hey, homie man. I had it took so long to get to the strip club this time that me and Rob spent too much money. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, the longer you're in there, the more drinks you have to have, yeah, yeah. and the more dances you have to get. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bad uh, time. That's a bad time. Yeah. <laughs> in Vegas, dude, you, you gotta fucking you dance with the devil constantly. Yeah. You, yeah. You know? Yeah. Strong it's dude real. right here, man. I mean, I go, there for two, <laughs> I go there for two days, dude, and I come home broke and fucking yeah. feeling like I, I got hit by a fucking train. Welcome we, to we my have to be like, we have trees. to be like a <laughs> Yeah, dude. You can't yeah. do anything. It's like, don't you just stay yeah. home. Yeah. <laughs> stay home, dude. Stay home, just... Yeah. Yeah, it'd be crazy to be out there all the time, man. No, it's, well, that's no. probably what it is. Everybody who's out there all the time stays the fuck away from that shit because they know what could happen if they keep going. Yeah. They'll get sucked in. You'll watch the people that don't stay away and they gamble a lot in particular, and you're like, damn, you just blew your whole rent check, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I seen that. I'm like, and there's oh, that good. that trippy mentality of like, uh, it's cool. I'll, next check, I'm a, I'm gonna do it. I'm a, <laughs> yeah, seriously. Time, you know? And then they do it the next time. It's like, oh, yep. yeah, yeah. That's why all those fucking places are living. All those 
casinos are lavish because yeah. everybody's given it giving up their money dude yeah, yeah. yeah. literally do the last two you. times the last two times i went to vegas i didn't put a, a fucking dime in a machine i didn't sit down at any fucking tables bro and i had the best time both That's fucking awesome. times dude because i just was like yo i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna eat my way through vegas i'm gonna go see some yes. sick shows and i'm gonna just drink it up and have fun with the people that i'm with Yep. That's it. Yeah, gambling ain't that hype. It's all right. Like you do I mean, it. I felt it. I felt it. Dude, I said, and that's it. I've I've had that one time where I was like killing it on the roulette table, right? You know, and but it's like that. That's the one time. That's it. Damn, I've it's never the first even time luck too. It's the first time luck, and you stop. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. beginner's luck, or mm-hmm. it's on your birthday, and you. You go for it. More. I don't know. No, it was like 2 a.m. and nobody was nobody else was sitting at, at that table with me, dude. And I was betting black and I was betting uh, the middle row, which has got the most black. So you get two to one on that middle and then you get the even money on your color. And I do both those bets at the same time, dude. And there was 13 blacks in a row. Holy shit. 13 blacks in a row. dude. Yeah, that's so, beginner's luck. That's beginner's luck. Dude, 100%. it was. I turned fifty dollars into a, a thousand dollars, bro. Yep. No, Man. I'm telling you, beginner's luck. It, it happened to me with blackjack. Even me, it was just me and the dealer, and and we're both looking at each other like, like what "This the is fuck? crazy, dude." <laughs> <laughs> the ninth black in a row, and we're like, "I'm still going black," and it's just you know, it just kept on cut. And then the last one, I lost a hundred, and I was like, "I'm out." Yeah. yeah. Was, uh, still well, walked away with the grand though, dude. I was like, "Fuck, dude," but never again. Never. <laughs> there you nah, go. Yeah, don't don't. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's sick. I have a three dollar net, like win total from my Vegas gambling, which was two <laughs> times, and uh, I'm I'm gonna just live with that three dollars ahead. <laughs> I don't ever need to go back. So, but one thing crazy about going to Vegas now is like we're all in California and like nothing's being built around here. And then you go to like Vegas or Phoenix and like there's like all these like big projects like outside the city that, like building yeah. out and i'm just like whoa oh, that's crazy what is it like to be somewhere that's like growing like i don't I know what that's to like see a time lapse because it's no yeah way. yeah it's pretty crazy how big it's getting yep yeah. in all directions i feel like dude just in, in to see ban- bands come and go here mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Not yeah. Not lot, many. last time i was there i saw it to violently vomit that was <laughs> six so dude yeah dude. i had fun dude hell yeah super fun so, uh, so with Hate Eternal, so, um, yeah, how many tours was that? And you did that fucking really awesome album. Um, fuck, what's that one called? I'm sorry. In uh, Furnace. Yeah, yeah. So that was like a, a three year stint with the band? Not that long. I think okay. it was, it's probably like two years or something. It was a while to get the album done. And then we had this tour cancel, which sucked. Um, and then we did mm. the aside Lorna Shore Black Crown Initiate Tour, which that was really cool. Interesting lineup, very diverse yeah. little package there. It was fun. Yeah, I mean, what was how did that material compare to the previous touring you had done in terms oh, of like man, difficulty was, and yeah? It was from Oceano to Hate Eternal. So like I had like this lax like more improvisational set that i would do which was so tight dude like i could do a lot of different things in oceano and then in hate eternal it was more like gotta kind of stick to it you know and it was way faster so i had a a a lot of one foots to practice because eric likes one foots a lot and i hadn't done them yet very much so I'm really thankful because now I can do left foot lead one foots and uh, it's, it, it's really nice for economy on a show. I switch Damn. back and forth. Sometimes I have to thank Eric for that. Cause I was like practicing in front of Oprah masterclass for like an hour long show. I would do like three or four of them just doing one foots you guys ever seen that? Oprah's masterclass was tight. They would no, have, dude, like, I, was, I, seen, I, I seen, almost laughed, but I didn't want to like offend. No, you. no, it was like this other show. <laughs> like Oprah's whack, like by herself. But uh, she would have like Billy Bob Thornton or like Jay Z or 
you know, whoever on there and they would talk about their life. So I was just like, but like, what? it's a masterclass. What are they teaching? Is she teaching yeah. interviewing or some shit? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it would just be whatever, like Billy Bob Thornton's story was tight. His was sick. And, and I remember just one footing through his whole <laughs> thing and not even noticing what I was doing because this dude was killing it. It was tight. Oh, yeah. And there was a bunch of stuff like that. I would just, I would just lock into TV and practice a lot. That's and uh, yeah, so even for that short time with Hate Eternal, uh, I really grew as a player, learned a lot about touring and stuff. Eric's really professional. He's all about like never missing or being late or messing around. So it was good. You know, I've had some more party oriented tours that might have been. Uh, you think more fun, but damaging after it all. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. I know. Just to speak on the Rutan thing real quick, like we've we've. I don't know if it was Joel who had a story. Somebody had a story where he literally was like dying from the flu, basically, and fucking still got up on stage and played a fucking six set. Eric Rutan's also a dude I've seen. I've never seen a guy restring a guitar quicker when he breaks a string he broke a string in the beginning of a song and he was still at the end of the song still play he got back in and was finishing the song that's, that's how tight. fast he restring and tuned up so yeah just kudos kudos to eric and of course that just shows how pro he is and you were just saying how pro he is so i just wanted to add he that. really is yeah he he did not mess around like we i i feel like i don't want to don't quote me but i feel like we were never late on that tour i don't know maybe um on a, a freak accident day or something but no man they didn't mess around nice all, all professional I got to yeah. see him play with Cannibal Corpse uh, at the uh, other Vegas Fest. Was that Psycho Fest last Psycho year? Fest that was Psycho. really fucking sick. He's yeah. killing it with them now. Yeah, that's a pretty oh, cool he... fit. They've been friends forever, and they yeah. worked together many times. So it kind of seemed like only a matter of time, kind of thing. Like he talked so highly of them when I was in the band. I mean, I I can understand why. Not yeah. a lot of bands have worked as hard as they have over these all of these years. You know what I mean? Just constantly. To have Morbid and Cannibal on your resume, along yep. with Hate Eternal being your own baby, it's just like, God yeah. damn it, dude! That's this true. guy is serious business. And yeah. Ripping Corpse was super sick. Too. Oh hell yeah, dude! His super old band. Oh yeah, so. dude. Ripping Corpse is insane. Yeah. Yeah. And like, nutty. dude, I love Eric. He's like the coolest dude. Like, you know, like every time we've ever hung out, I thought he was like super funny and like he's like super nice and rad. He'll teach and, uh, you a lot, man. Like, oh, the dude, more time you spend with him, yeah, like, he taught me a lot. Like, just life he's lessons. Super nice, shit. dude. Yeah. yeah. He's super Lies. nice. Yeah. Yeah. Just goes back on what we were saying, dude. Play yeah, extreme yeah. music. You might be a cool dude. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. yeah i know i don't know why people don't think that like it's weird yeah, yeah. the stigma is breaking down a little bit though now. it is though, yeah. destroying all i think i recently people. just saw there was an article saying that there's a study that you know extreme metal or yeah well i saw music. that i was like duh yeah, yeah, it's like we've all been talking about like, this for years. Like you guys just look at yeah, us like, like oh, fucking extreme music calms fucking people down. It's like yeah, no fucking shit. Even yeah, it's like yeah. Radiohead for some people. Listen to the most yeah. depressive, crushing, <laughs> you know, thing that you can, and you're like, oh, I feel better. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, I'm not. I'm a very happy dude, and I like to listen to sad music too. Me too. Man. Yeah, you know? I, write I really sad like music fucking too. somber, melancholy yeah. sounding shit, dude. Yeah, I, I'm a happy dude. It's That's just true. like what, maybe it's like you know, it, it's just like there's certain. Well, I, it's I'm just gonna fucking say what I was saying earlier. We have certain things that we need to get out, you know, and then we get it out through that. That's yeah, you know. I mean, to me, too, I just like the instruments. Like, when I'm listening to the, these crazy bands, like, I, I, I mean, I don't know if Chase does that, but for me, I usually, not so much I focus on the vocals. I more just listen to the guitar and the drums, like, what, what they're doing and, like, 
I can hear all the weird, crazy shit they're doing in the song. And I'm like, okay, that's sick. And I'll be like, nah, you know, I didn't like that part or something. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like other people, when they listen to metal, they're probably just liking the whole song. You know what I mean? Like the vocals, the the mm-hmm. the parts, all that type of shit. But I mean, yeah, I you'll, like go, you, yeah, yeah, you'll go through like the, a song. You'll go through a song and listen to the, the, you'll pay attention to the drums only on that song. You know, oh, I'm that's saying both like drums know. and guitar because you know, I, I play guitar, yeah. 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 but I'm just, no, yeah. I was just saying this is this is like me just tying into what you said. Um, this is how I would do it too. Like, if, if I if oh, I, yeah, you you know, I'd I would listen to I would try and focus on the drums for a song, mm-hmm. I'd even go back and then bring it back and focus on the guitars that you know, and as a vocalist only, I'd rarely pay attention to the vocalist too in a band. I actually you know yeah i don't know why like even in, even in slaughter to prevail as crazy as as alex terrible is and everyone knows who he is and he's like hella brutal and shit no he sounded the same like don't get me wrong it sounded crazy but i still only focused on like the guitar and like the drums like what the drums was doing or like where where a riff would come in like i think it's because with vocals especially like uh in metal like uh it's not like there's like things you can like re- mm-hmm. correlate relate to, I guess for yeah, yeah. for some people besides the lyrics, you know what I'm saying? So and uh, it's hard I, to get dudes to read case, metal so I lyrics. Know, I don't know. No, it's like in metal, the guitar and the drums create the hook. Yeah. And that's kind of, for that's one way of listening to a song is just listening for the hooks and the, that you can hear I mean. the vocals as just kind of being on top of that. Other times you hear it as more connected, but and the and the vocalist's response to that statement would be Travis Ryan from Cattle. He's like, <laughs> "Fuck that, dude! I'm going to make you guys pay attention to me. Ah, you want to yeah. play attention to the guitar? Nah, nah. Check this shit out. <laughs> I like his clean vocal screaming. Uh, yeah, it's with a, a I mean, note. Like it's, it's, it's not really person. been done. That's what I was going to say. I, that the main reason why I back that shit is because it's, it's super unique. You yeah. Know, it's yeah. something that I've, and, and I'm a, I'm a dude who really likes shit. That's fresh to me. That's where you I'm know? at. I and want I the really, new, the cutting yeah, yeah. I want that new, new shit, dude. I want it to be. Yeah. Like that. Igor. And, and it's, it's yeah. us chasing, Igor we're chasing, it's, we're chasing oh, dude, the dragon hold on, hold on, with the drums. On. I mean, with the Igor, he said, yeah, yeah Igor is fucking edge. dude. I've been Igor I've been down so with Igor sick. since Nostril. Yeah. I don't even know when that album. Oh, oh yeah. my Nostril god, that's was, the very old stuff. I got a physical copy of that shit because I yeah. that was that when that album came out is when it got on my radar and I fell in love with that dude ever since and and the plethora of fucking m- amazing musicians that that dude works with yep. and they're playing at brick by brick that place you guys played at i, I missed oh, yeah. when is but, it? uh it's uh i think it's like at the end of february or something like that and um, they're playing uh great with, american music hall in san with, francisco with melt banana dude yeah, yeah dude. it's like right when i'm melt going banana. on tour that see that's oh, my really? type yeah. of fucking show right there to that that would explain yeah. like what i look for in uh, it, it I mean, not always. I still love the fucking classics. I still love re- regular normal shit too. But like Igor and Melt Banana on the same bill, yeah. that makes my dick hard, dude. <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah. Um, hell, hell, <laughs> yeah <that> brother. <laughs> hell yeah, brother. <laughs> hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah, brother. Fuck, man. Yeah, that's, dude, can we just bring it up to that tour you're about to go on? Because I'm hyped for that shit, dude. Defeated Sanity. Yeah. skeletal remains mm. vitriol and splattered is the brutal death metal tour of the year right there dude fuck is yeah, that shit. Cali? Is that you guys Cali? are also playing a brick right brick then right if yeah we, we, god damn what, what date is that one again i don't know but i think like, it's the 20 professor can you all right i gotta go dude. yeah gotta 24th go. at brick by brick Cause when is the Igor yeah. show? Cause I want to go. I think it's, it's a week like, before. I know it's okay. like the same. I know. I have to but they'll, up. yeah, I, you might be on tour still when they play Vegas. Cause I'm sure they're going through there. Insane. Yeah. Yeah. Vegas uh, gets skipped a lot because we're like up here and then San Diego and Phoenix are way down here. So they just go under us and we're like, wait, wait, so come crazy. up, come up. It's yeah. like five because hours into the, you would think Vegas country. is better than both of the other, 
options than San Diego. Mm, yeah, sometimes San Diego kind of really? slays us, man. I feel really? like okay, cool. Yeah. Well, right on because I live down here. So yeah. hey man, San Diego <laughs> on this last tour was really sick. That was a headliner for vitriol, and it was um really it wasn't some sold out thing or something, but there was a lot of people there, and I was just like California. Fuck yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. And Long Beach yeah. slayed. California no. love, dude. It's always yeah. it, it's got it's got the love for us. The coasts really have the love. I don't know. That's true. But that still, is true. Cali is like. There's a lot of pockets where you go there, you're going to be stoked because people yeah. are going to come out. You know, um, my but, buddy saw uh, Vigil on that uh, Long Beach show right before we played the couple shows with you after it, and they said that was with uh, Teeth at Supply Teeth. and Demand. Yeah, and they said that was a sick ass show too. It was so. a little place and packed. I was, I yeah. couldn't walk. I was like, "This is fucking sick, man!" Like, I love those small venues that are packed to the brim where everybody. Yeah. It's it's just like you're forced to catch mm-hmm. the energy. That's yeah, that's is. true. And you're like you you can't avoid it. Yep. Yeah. Dude, playing yeah, a sick it's sicker than small. a big stage sometimes. I know, right? Half empty. Yeah. Totally. Like play, play, play like a packed like venue, just everyone's all into it. Like a small little place, just packed is so sick. Just, yep. uh, I mean, I'm gonna be honest. Like, if I had a choice, and this is really scumbag to say, like, I I almost preferred like the the shittier tours I did in the van when it'd be like those venues where we had like the tables, you know, like the the fold out tables on the side and the merch, mm-hmm. and like yeah. just, you know, mm-hmm. they'd be packed out in a little venue, like. That shit was way more fun than when I got to the bigger shit. I don't know why. Because I guess you could just, know, you know. Like that 160 to 200 where it's it, the capacity of that ven- like yeah, that's the yeah, capacity yeah. of the venue. And everybody came out that night. You're selling merch. Everybody's, yeah, it's sick. Everybody's on and everybody's fucking crushing. And it's yeah, just like, yeah, yeah. It, it, it just like it's a vibrating room that – uh, yeah, of an energy that you just can't explain yeah. to somebody who hasn't experienced it, you know. Mm-hmm. That's true. It, it, it's and and the connections that you make, like there's lifelong friendships that can happen that night, you know. Yeah. Yep. Oh, for and sure. yeah. and uh, yeah, I miss it a lot, dude. You know, I haven't been to a you know a, a fucking good show in a long time because of all the bullshit. But mm. you know, it's like with with the Bay Area scene too there's like the venues keep dropping off so ever since the pound closed like shit's been kind of like you know not as good in the bay and the bay gets skipped as well dude yeah Yeah. you know so So, like frisco used to be a a hot spot and now it's hard for underground to get into frisco and you know i don't know yeah yeah we're going back to cupertino which i've never played there and now we're gonna go again that's so kind of like the evolution of it, dude, because there was no Cupertino shows when I was doing it, but like, <laughs> like everybody, they, like now these little like spots are popping up around San Francisco yeah. that are now getting the shows. And I'm like, yo, yeah, what's up with like, DNA lounge? D- I know, dude. What's up with DNA? Slims is closed. Fucking yeah. DNA is. I haven't heard. Sh- well, actually, cool. Keith's going to be at DNA. So DNA is <laughs> still doing some shit, nice. but, uh, um yeah obviously what like the regency ballroom which is too big for most underground there's still the fucking the uh the park side which is a small oh, small yeah. place that's where that, we're playing on that tour wait oh, okay actually yeah. maybe we're playing like cupertino and the park side the park mm-hmm. side i saw yeah, Felucia I there when they were like 18 wow. and they were uh really impressive like even back then they had this yeah. different guitar player before Rob Maramonte was in the band. Mm-hmm. I remember still like super tight. Scott killed it even back then. I remember that. Yeah. I just went and saw uh, Ontogeny with uh, Joseph there. Who else was it on that bill? Uh, oh, Cartilage. Cartilage. And Bongfather. Bongfather. Which is dope as <laughs> fuck, dude. Bongfather yeah, was metal. fucking sick, dude. Bongfather was a stoner metal band that had like chicks all the front row just dancing. You're just like, whoa, this is this is strange. That real <laughs> like hey, chicks dancing at a tight. metal show. Like, yeah, it was, <laughs> a, <laughs> it was a cool venue. I before that, I would have never. I would have been like, 
we're not playing San Francisco. Like it's not an option. And now I'm like, okay, there's still one option left for like. Where a, in the city is that again? Is it by the Panhandle? Like on where? where is the I don't side? tell. I just you just tell the Uber driver to take you there, dude. And the park park side. <laughs> where is it again? Yeah, we'll drop you I off. Can't, right I, I in can't the, remember, dude. It's been been years since I've I have been to a Google that. Yeah, there, I, yeah, I, I drove like, there. Like, where in the city? I have a feeling there's like a a park right like, across the street or some shit. It's not Upper Hate. Where is it? It's dude? near like Chase Center, uh, Portrero oh, Hill neighborhood. Oh, Portrero Hill. Okay. Yeah. Near. Hmm. Yeah. Dillinger's played there. I've seen uh, a Romanian yeah. black metal band called uh, uh, Nagira Bunjet or some shit like yeah. that. They were dope there. And um, yeah, I've seen a few, uh, just a couple shows there, but it's like that's the only kind of small yeah. spot that had that like energy when I was there, you know? Yeah. So, so Jason, like, I noticed you have that cool drum set. Like, what is that? Is that a sonar kit? Like, what is yeah. that kit again? Yeah. What, what, what is the wood and that like sick design? What is that again? It's a sick. It's drum a birch set. kit and the yeah. with the African marble finish SQ2 oh, kit. It's sick, dope, dude. Dude, it's so sounds sick. really nice. I'm recording already. Yeah. Nice. What are the sizes of that whole kit? It's like a like 10, 12, 16 or something like Tom's or um 10, 12, 14, mm -hmm. and then a 22 kick and a six by five 14 snare. It's fat. Is it matching? Like the no, same the snare is not matching. Yeah, yeah, totally. It sounds really good. Casey, so or but all, anybody chime in on this because now here here's the part where the dummy asks a question because he doesn't know anything about drums uh birch wood right that's the wood mm -hmm. you're talking about that it's made yeah. of so mm -hmm. your clear kit is made of what casey well clear wood dude the no, just kidding. <laughs> it's made of a uh, acrylic like as in like you know like clear and that obviously plastic. changes the sound so what would what would what does it do being acrylic versus well, well wood? wood is like the, like the standard like you know style for drums like and it's like all these different woods have different things and birch for, versus like maple and like and then blends of all that kind of stuff i know and i wanted to know what throwing acrylic in the mix does does it what is it does it mimic a certain wood mm, no or really. does it have its I mean, own it's like, sound too yeah, it has a, it's, a, it's own sound it's different okay. you know uh, that's a good question. Oh, you can see it behind me. Yeah, this is our this is our practice space that I'm at. That's that's um, that's his kit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Got that's the really and shit back there. Yeah, feels good, man. It, it sounds really dope. So I saw you is like a Shred. tacky. My bad, and uh, and the acrylic sounds pretty uh, punchy too. But what were you gonna say, mm -hmm. Joseph? Sorry. Oh yeah, no, I was interrupting just to say I saw you murder that kit two nights in a row so i when i realized that was the same kit i'm like holy shit that's yeah. sick and to but, answer uh, your question anthony like yeah. they they both sound good just different you know so like, like like reverberation like oh uh, well, yeah well more resonance is the word okay. like with toms okay. and stuff but but like a, a, a acrylic drums are really easy to tune and, and they're like more just kind of like like they have a good attack and stuff like so like attack is like you know like how fast like, yeah, like if you're going fast, you can hear like the like the hits, like that's like attack, you know. Okay. But if you think of like roto toms or like uh, like like, like a, a acrylic, like you know, I don't know. It's like it's it's got more of like attack to it, you know. Nice. Or or octobonds. What are those things called? Octobonds, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Those are um, cool. um, yeah. Pink Floyd, fucking. <laughs> but Hell wood yeah. ha wood has more warmth to it, so it's like like a different sound. So you know, like. Mm yeah like exactly it's like it's just they're all they all sound good basically it's just different mm -hmm. you know? well i mean acrylic sounding sick as fuck on that new odia shit <laughs> it's yeah. true and the new <laughs> transcend the realm it's good it's good for metal derek roddy has that kit i like acrylic i wanted that tama acrylic kit that thomas pridgen had but i never got it I yeah really Gunner. yeah <laughs> do you know uh yeah. desecravity that Japanese yeah, band. Yeah, dude, I love that band. They're he sick. has like the biggest acrylic kit ever. Really? <laughs> it's so sick. Yeah, it's like a it's like an eighteen piece with like what kind of brand? the octos and everything. That's a good question. I don't know. It might be a DW also. Um, yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's really sick. 
Um, but yeah, dude, just, I don't know. It's yeah. I would love to like have the same song recorded on like different drum sets and like get to hear or like have them all like in a sample library so you could pull them all out and have them. Um, what kind of heads do you use Jason? We're usually the G twos or Remo exactly in stripes. Yep. Um, but clear, yeah, also clear G twos usually, yeah, and yeah, then the controlled sure. sound for the snare coded, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, so we got this fan question about uh, how you uh, prepare for tour and and how you condition while you're on tour. Um, so something that changed semi recently, uh, within the last couple of years is I started running and working out, which I didn't, I didn't do it for tour or whatever, but it made a huge difference. And I will preach that you should be working on your cardio. If you want to do this stuff, like, and play drums like this, um, because there was points of the vitriol set where, I was like, like, and people were, you probably saw me do that. Like I was just breathing, like very heavy breathing. Like I was fucking dying, but I I wasn't, but I was, you know, but um, I had a hold on it because I'd been running and stuff. So that helped so much for that tour. Even at the end of the tour, I was like, I could do like two more weeks or maybe a fucking another month. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so that's a big thing now that I'm going to make sure I try to do. I need to get the hell back on my running, taking a little bit of time off, but, uh, that's a big thing now cardio. And also, um, something that me and Rob were joking about when we first heard the vitriol stuff, like it was so gnarly that this dude was like, you better practice. You better get on it. You better be practicing, man. And it, it was, it was funny, but also like we both knew, like, you know, even my homie knew how crazy the set was. So I didn't take it lightly. I played a lot of pads and, and crappy setups. I didn't have my drums near me all the time, but you have to know the songs because you know, you're going to be breathing and there might be a hot girl in the front row and <laughs> watching you on the side. And then you may fuck up. And, it sounds like shit. No, <laughs> yeah, um, and she didn't even uh, notice because she doesn't listen to she fucking doesn't metal. Care about you, but she still <laughs> fucked you up. Yeah. So that's the kind yeah. of thing that I try to <laughs> do is just have the songs like to where I could be. Like I have a video of my in-ears cutting in and out and I'm still playing the song, but it's, it's not the best. I'm going to post it soon. It's funny. Um, but that's like what so I, at that point, you just it. take them out and you're just trying no, to put, I couldn't out. take them out because I couldn't hear guitars very well. So mm-hmm. I was just twitching and like, you know, doing some, yeah, <laughs> some trying to like knock them, your neck. like hit yeah, it and see like if it'll fucking start working song. again. I, I was doing the, the fresh Prince of Bel Air, like, like about to fight somebody. <laughs> you know? um, nice. So that I couldn't take them out though. And I, I don't know. I, I had this like hope that uh, it would cut back in and it, and it did. Um, so that's the kind of stuff I like to, I almost like to have happen to me mm-hmm. because if you have a, a bunch of perfect shows and then something goes wrong and you crumble, which there are some drummers out there, I'm not going to name any names, but like, you know how it is when you get in a new band, they'll tell you about the old guy. It's like an ex. Mm-hmm. So they're talking shit. <laughs> <A little laughs> yeah. bit. Some, some band, not all of them, not pointing fingers. No, all bands. Do this. Like you you um, replace you know them for a reason. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so you know what I'm reason. saying. Like, yeah. you notice things that they say they don't like about the That's the best drummer. part of getting new members in a band is you could talk about <laughs> yeah. the old members with the. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Depending on who it was, because sometimes <laughs> the dude was better than me that i play after so i'm like hey sorry <laughs> not alex rudinger or whatever but uh yeah no uh, i would like to see what everybody's got because i'm just competitive like that and i know that i'll scare some people like outside of metal drumming like to where we're just like take off the left pedal dude we're just doing drums right now like that's like i would like to sit in a room with 
you know, some of the scarier dudes that I I've seen. So I want to take it back to your dad real quick. What was his reaction when you showed him metal and told him, this is what I want to (laughs) play. Man, I have a pretty tight story about that. We were at somewhere, some store, and I seen the Black Dahlia Unhallowed album. And I was like, Dad, can I, will you get this for me? And he was like, Yeah, cool. And and he, and we grabbed it. And like on the way home, I put it in. And he was like, Holy shit, that sounds like the CD skipping on a blast. (laughs) (laughs) He was like, Damn. So that was like his first reaction ever to ever hearing it which is so golden you know how that is when you oh, hell yeah. someone metal and you're just like <laughs> so it was it was hilarious because i agreed i was like you're fucking right it does sound like like i could totally yeah. get that from what he said but like he does he's not like into it that much he's more jazz and funk yeah because it's but, like a, it's like a language you gotta yeah. really learn how to speak it and you just showed him a uh, foreign language yeah, and it's not way. like bass like oriented man like metals dominated by guitar mm-hmm. you know <laughs> it's mm-hmm. not like a bass player's genre if you're looking for victor wooten or something like that you should show you know? him like death individual thought patterns it's dude. true steve on his fucking bass playing on that album it is true that that dude was sick and way or like death day, human too. and all uh, you know cynic like all that shit he'd probably be down as a bass player he would he's like i can't play metal and i'm like yeah you could you don't have to like Dude, four that finger like shit. man i've i've seen some scary bass players man like doing like four finger like so they're out i there. literally i nowadays i actually freak out more on bass players than guitar players dude i like to watch like i mean he's not metal but i love to watch thundercat play his fucking bass dude he really Oh, dude, that and he's he's making he it's a six string bass. He just plays it like it's a guitar, and it's with all of his fingers. And you're just like, all right, dude. It's like you that big ass that. hollow That's body possible. bass. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I like to watch. I like to watch bass. Like I've really connected with bass more in the last I don't know decade of my life. Even though I've been listening to to bass music my whole life, like bass, it was always guitar and drums back in the day for me, but then I yeah. started to appreciate the bass and now I it's starting bass. to become my favorite fucking instrument, you know? And yeah, I, I hate it when it's not in the that. mix. Now I hate it when it's not in the mix, unless I'm listening to like Norwegian fucking black metal. That, <laughs> you it's know, like it's other, barely in the mix. Like there's too many guitar players nowadays. That's why, yeah, Rob's mm-hmm. got the guitar. There's duties. too many of us, man. Mm-hmm. There's way too many. Like rough job. I, 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 I was telling uh, Chase that like uh, the other day. I was like, bro, there's like way too many guitar players now. Like especially yep. on like Instagram and shit. There's so many. You know, the soloists. I'm by myself. I don't want to. Yeah, there's just so many yeah. dudes that just play and shred. I'm, I'm Alan like, Jackson, shit. guitar player. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it totally is more names now than bands. It's like. What's your merch gonna do, man? What's your merch gonna be? Your face on on every shirt. Right, right, right. <laughs> That's totally. why. I no, there are. Band. There's so yeah. many guitarists, bro. It's insane. Like. I still got crazy. bad appreciation for guitar. Don't get me no, wrong. No, no, no. I'm not hating either. I play it, but you know, I'm just saying, stating the obvious. Yeah, there's a lot. There's a mm-hmm. lot, man. Like, like, well, I would say more than love. drummers. Oh, there's more. There's a lot more guitar players than drummers. Yeah, right now, you like know. especially in our community of, of and bass players. I think yeah, it's always been like that because like, that's why shit, so many yeah. drummers play in multiple bands, dude. Because yeah. there's not enough. Yeah, he gets yeah. hit up all the time. I can't oh, do it though. <laughs> I can't even yeah. do the other ones. It's, I don't, I've it never sucks, even, man. I've never worked with a drummer in my, you know, professional career. Yeah. Uh that hasn't been in multiple projects. Yeah. They've always had multiple bands going, you know? Yeah. That double duty how shit. It is. There's Casey, not enough. Casey That's was doing part. that double duty shit fucking, you know, 15. What? Are you 16. gonna invest in a drum kit? just to play it with like one set of dudes the whole time like right <laughs> yeah yeah that's true you gotta you gotta share the love album. you guys are polygamous dude yeah gotta... yes <laughs> <laughs> i think too i'm telling you there's so many uh more guitarists because like 
I think parents would rather buy the kid a guitar than a drum set. I'm telling you, it's like, cheaper. You know, yeah, it's cheaper. Yeah, not only cheaper, noise. they're thinking about what they have to deal with because yeah, yeah. it's a less torture I, for the. To tell me, I'll I'm tell you right now, dude. I I have three kids, and I have not bought a toy myself personally. If it's my call, that thing doesn't make noise. <laughs> See? See? It doesn't make Makes noise, sense. dude. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm buying some shit that's gonna make your brain work or make your brain fire. Mm. I'm not gonna make it, it, it to where you're fucking hitting it and making noise all, or you know, like, uh, oh, you know, like the fuck, you know what it is, dude. All the little toys that you hit a button and it goes off for like 15 seconds, and you're like, why is it going for so long, dude? Why is oh, it so yeah, loud? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah, oh, it makes sense, man. It's like buying your kid a trumpet. Yeah, like, I yeah. fucked up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you fucked up. You didn't realize it. And, and but yeah, so guitar, uh, guitar is definitely. I think like home electric drum sets are kind of like the death of a lot of drummers. Like, mm, a lot of, yeah. It's like, it's just, oh, what's this toy? Like, bing, 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 bing. Oh, yeah, whatever. Okay. It's true. I just feel like, I, I, okay, I'm not a drummer, but I will throw something same, in. This dude. is throwing the pot. I feel like yeah. I see a lot of uh, dudes, especially younger dudes, you'll see them like ripping on an electric kid, like some like crazy song, you know, I don't know what band, whatever. And they're just ripping all. And I'm like, I don't think that's the same as ripping on a real drum set. Like, no, I know there's not. something different. No, mm-hmm. it's triggered, dude. The whole kit is triggered. So it just sounds yeah. all sick, kind of like, you know. Every, the velocity is up on every hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't sound anything like when you play a snare drum that hasn't really been tuned up and you don't know how to tune it. And then the toms that you don't really tune <laughs> that well. And then you don't hit them very hard. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah you have yourself a very like, quiet drummer. Like a jazz drummer would never survive on a kit like that because of no. notes and, and various, you know, uh, not dynamic and strength that they well, use well okay so <clears throat> a jazz drummer gets resonance out of the toms in a different way so like you know as opposed to attacking the toms or going for the in- individual hits like brrr, out of a tom you know it's like they're they're building up the the like the resonance from that tom with a like a really high tuned say single ply kind of a song you know so if i'm going down like but like snare to toms like say like mm. snare tom one and then like floor tom but if i'm doing a jazz thing and the toms are like tuned up super high like, like one ply like they're they're resonating like creating that sound it's like it as opposed to like you know metallica kind of toms where you got like two ply like or whatever tuned lower and you're trying to get the like a, individual attack hits you know it's like a different kind of like sound from mm-hmm. the toms so it's wow, like that's technical man that's some yeah <laughs> it's our acoustic versus electric exactly. yeah we're yeah, doing yeah. electric on metal and then if you like i said it's matches. like taking my amp away if i had no distortion mm-hmm. or something they do a totally opposite inverted approach to mm-hmm. what we do and right. they exactly. use color instead of um yes like just sheer volume as an amount of mm-hmm. of notes and hits they're trying to create something tasteful and creative and they're doing so much improv that's mm-hmm. what metal's mm-hmm. missing man we all should be doing like solo your turn you yeah, yeah. Robert, <laughs> so, uh, we I agree, dude. Because I, I, we, uh, we've been talking about death metal improv like lately on the podcast, and there's like some bands that have done it, and I was doing tight. it like with with Diego and some other people, like in Joseph, and we've been doing it for the last like year or two. But I think it's the new revolution, like as far as like yes. a side thing is like the death metal improv thing, and like I mean, all of us like I, I don't know about you guys, but like I mean, back in the day when I played in Decrepit, like Matt and I. Like we, I mean, or Dan and all of us, we, we would just like start band practice and just do improv for like yes. 20, 30 minutes and just and then warm you up. Be like, we've been like some around shit. for yeah. 40 minutes. Yeah, yeah. And some sick around. shit would come out, right? You know, yeah. Dude, like, we've shit. said this. We've said this. That's right. why bands, yeah. that's why bands, I mean, I'm not going to say every band again, we're not trying to roast, mm. but it's like, that's why certain bands nowadays aren't like sick, I would say, or like, how they used to be because i feel like now 
it's all written on the computer, guitar pro, all that type of shit. So like you're not playing it in the room. And me and him even say that, like, that's why the songs won't even sound the same live, you know, for a lot of these bands, because you're writing this insane shit on the computer. And you have all this like EQs and, you know, Trigger. preciseness and all this shit like that. And then like you play it in a room and it sounds nothing like that, opposed to like you were saying, the Crevic Birth, you're just jamming in the room and then the songs are sick because you can actually just like play them. And then it would life. sound the same in the room. Yeah. You would be at the band practice in New York. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a thing that we hit on so much, dudes, is is that that flow state and everybody in that flow state at the mm -hmm. same time and everybody realizes they're in that flow state together and it becomes yeah. this like unstoppable thing for however many milliseconds it could be you know it could be multiple seconds minutes too but like just hitting those little pockets where everybody feels this wave that they all caught you know we all caught the same wave and we're all standing up on the fucking surfboards like yo dude yes we right all, right right you know? not not one dude writing all the music and, and, and all, sending it and being like, learn these parts. It's like, no, nah, yeah, that's, nah. that's For not sure, the move. Dude. And and that's well, the, that's the drug well, we've been chasing this whole career. Guys. Another interesting thought is like, when I was coming up, you know, back in the day, you know, in like in the two thousands, like, yeah, I mean, I don't know any bands that used a click track, like live, right. You know, until we toured with black Dahlia and like bigger bands, that were like, oh yeah, we're doing that, and that was like, not till two. That's new. That shit was new. Yeah. It is new. Yeah. So like back uh -huh. in the day, like for for me, like I mean, I mean, he hearing stories of bands, but also like me playing in bands, like I don't know, like doing shows in the two thousand, like two thousand, two thousand one, post that, like nobody used to click live like it wasn't like no. like no, even a dude. thing that or anybody did or like only a bigger band would do some something yeah. like that you know people couldn't afford that you know how much yeah those exactly. yeah it was expensive. and the technology yeah, back then exactly it was like what how are you gonna do that like mm -hmm. we just had amps and the drums over exactly there. yeah yeah right and yeah. it was like a briefcase for your guys's triggers yeah. back then too. I'm sure the modules and all that shit have shrank. Yeah. I yeah, had to sell smaller. I had to sell my keyboard from high school to get the DM5, that the Elise's DM5 because <laughs> back then that's all there was. And it was like a one rack <laughs> unit just to get that one trigger sample like the like you know the So the you were probably running. like on the early side of the trigger really gnarly yeah. dude i remember being afraid of you dog i was like i don't want to <laughs> play before or after him oh, nowhere man. near this dude <laughs> no, no, that's so funny. nope oh yeah dude, dude those, you guys yeah. were crushing dude so yeah. tight dude they were the best yeah. live death metal band oh at wait the time, no, i just said thanks and i'm not even in that band you guys are talking about <laughs> uh, uh, odious. no they were hard uh that, that was odious goes hard for me on guitar hard. When I was younger, uh, those first two albums, I think, are like the first three. You guys, Decrepit Birth did. Uh, yeah. uh, what was yeah. it? In Time it's Begins. In time I remember begins. that one was crazy. Yeah, it had like crazy. That was a weird album. It was sick, though. I was it, sick that. So, it was weird because it was different than oh, anything yeah. we had heard at that time, dude. That's what kind of freaked us out. At Like, oh, dude, the, oh, yeah. the bar has been, ro has yeah. been risen to a new Yeah, level. it was a sick album. Yeah. And then what diminished between worlds is where they yeah, started yeah, like that was evolving the into that one. that's when they started evolving into what the current decrepit that's like yeah. the bridge album to what decrepit yeah. does today. That's um, some innovative stuff on that, honestly. I haven't still heard anything really yeah. like hey, you gotta album. think of it like this, man. Like just because a band's not fucking metallica size doesn't mean like it doesn't hold weight with an influence for a big amount of people. Oh, it does. You know, like yeah, sure there could be a group of like sick guitar players or drummers or whatever that all like, I even feel that way about my sugar. They're not huge, huge. Like, you know, they're not Metallica huge. They're huge. Mm -hmm. But like, it's one of those bands that people just know they're like, Oh, you know, same thing. Decrepit birth. Yeah. 80 turn all those type of bands. People just already know like, all right, you know, my that's the real, that's the real shit. Like, 
Yeah, yeah, they've influenced bigger bands than they are in right now. Yeah. Like there's bands that are probably doing Fuck it, that numbers. numbers. Yeah. That's true. They love the guitar. Well, for player. us, it would be Suffo too. So mm-hmm. Yeah. You can't not say suffocation, dude. That, that's true. That's yep. a big, big fucking key puzzle to like the Cali scene. Yeah. Everybody was yeah. fucking freaking on Suffo. See, and they're just like a band, like I said, that everybody recognizes. You know, they're not Metallica, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah, Yeah, it holds the weight. And that's the thing, too, is like with this show and like with our underground just aesthetic in general, it's like it doesn't matter. There are people out there that it is important to. It's important to even if it's fucking a hundred people dude those a hundred those hundred people it's really important too so it's like it's it's making its difference in all the that's the whole thing dude you start locally and then you it branches out you know and just fucking stay in your pocket and you know, it's gonna- funny it's like till till this day i still think i still feel kind of intimidated by haiti turtle you know like, yeah. like even though like I'm friends with Eric and I love and I've toured with him and I love Hate Eternal. I love all those guys and it's been years and years, but I'm like, God, that music. Like <laughs> if they ever asked me to like or had or ever Fast, had to man. do it. Or like if I had like a dream where I was like, shit, I gotta it's like, dude, that's like climbing up a mountain like backwards. Like, dude, I had yeah. dreams about like, that, man. When I was in Hate Eternal, I was having lucid dreams about climbing mountains and shit. What? Really? It was the hardest Jesus, thing I've ever dude. done in my Damn, life. Dude. This just fucking brutal. just blew my mind, dude. It's like that correlation. What is climbing a mountain in Hate Eternal now? That's what's yeah. in my mind. I'm like, because it is a mountain. It is, dude. It's a mountain of soldiers against you you must and you yeah. fighting up must hill. take each as you Look climb here. the mountain it's so brutal man that was the hardest thing i've ever done i had to do like meditation at night and like get my head out of what was that day happening because it, oh, that whole day it was just so, so brutal so what was the recording process like for that album god dude all right man i'll spill it Eric, Eric will be happy that, that people know about this because he is about that that military. Um, he he kind of compared it to like football, which I don't watch football, but the yeah. way he explained it, it makes it makes perfect sense. He's trying to get the best out of me, even beyond what I think I'm capable of, which mm-hmm. he did, and mm-hmm. he did get me to do things that I didn't even think I could do. Um, and the way he did it was pretty interesting. So, uh, a huge thing for me when we started was he had a click that would speed up every 30 seconds or one, like 41 minute, whatever. And it would go from like 210 to 300. So about at nine, 10 minutes, you're, you're playing at 300, whatever you choose to play, which for me is not double bass. Uh, but yeah. I was like doing like skank beats and like, you know, two handed blast stuff and like trying to do some little short fills and then you start it over. So that was the first step. Then he would have me play like for hours a day. Um, of course. Uh, then the next thing we did, which was really weird to me, was we, we recorded all 10 songs every day for like, I don't want to get this wrong let's let's say three or four days conservatively it might have been more than that um like four or five days whatever it was but we did 10 songs a day wait wait, wait just for on. fun to hold see where second. we were at so you recorded the album over and over again wait wait wait, wait, wait yeah wait what you recorded and... 10, 10... <laughs> hey, hey, start over start on that part recorded 10 songs a day like just the takes like we yeah. wouldn't stop if i messed yeah. up yeah 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 so it would be horrible, you know, it'd be a bunch of, oh, cool. You had it for a second and then you fucking lost your mind. Jesus. Um, <laughs> so by the time we like would do two or three songs a day, I'm not going to say it was easier, but I knew like that I would be in there for hours, you know? Um, so it was, dude, it was brutal. There was a day where we were doing this song that was like 270 and I just, I couldn't do it. 
I was like tired. I was yeah, like dude, done insane. or whatever. And Eric's just like, let's cut it, man. <laughs> like you've had enough. Like, let's just like call it, like let's regroup mm-hmm. the next day we did it, you know? So that yeah. kind of thing is going to happen with albums like that. Yeah, for but sure. Dude. It was scary, man. Like insane. I couldn't play those tempos. Like, so I had to try to get as close as I could. There's very little editing on that album and like no quantizing. Yeah. Um, so it's very real and you can hear struggle and, and uh, you know, but failure. that's what I love about it, dude. That's yeah, what it's I love tight. about sure. Like yeah. I, we've always talked about this, like the human sounding shit's going to grab my ear and I'm going to connect with it quicker naturally you know it's not that i don't like the quantized fucking perfect sounding shit but when it is human and i naturally pick up on the fact that it's human it makes me listen more yeah you know because it's like a war man and someone did that yeah totally dude and i'm listening to your battle i'm listening to your fucking battle to get that shit done it's like blood and sweat and tears. Like, not going to say I was fucking crying, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah, those nights were the turmoil. Yeah. It was weird because I wasn't smoking as much weed. So like you start dreaming crazy when you don't mm-hmm, smoke mm-hmm. or drink before. I'll bed. attest to that for sure. Um, yeah. So it was like another existence, man. Like I was, listening to this same book every night over and over called the active side of infinity carlos castaneda book super sick about like a shaman teaching um this dude who was uh what was he he was he was like studying the origins of humans you know what i mean and like is it fiction or non-fiction that's the cool thing about this book is like it can be argued mm-hmm. because the guy will say things during trips so he's doing peyote with the shaman and so people are like that's not real no one can turn into a cloud type thing and uh but that's what he saw so Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um it's pretty tight i would say that it's half and half it's probably you know some truth and so it's real accounts from a dude who had a serious journey Yeah. yeah so that actually makes sense it goes with my dreaming you know, yep. because it was like this, like he was like searching and seeking and learning and, and evolving through the book. And that was what was happening to me as a drummer and as a person. I mean, going like and doing something like that, it changes you in a good way. It makes you reflect and realize what you've done, which was nothing light <laughs> And sometimes I'm just like, oh, it wasn't that brutal. But then I'm like, no, no, that was fucking brutal. Like, Mm -hmm. and I like that because an album shouldn't be easy. You shouldn't blow through an album and you're just like, oh, that was it. Yeah. Disturbing. Even with the Ghost of the Universe album, which this is not metal, but it still um, takes a lot of effort for me to play those keyboard parts. The drum parts are more flow state. I get really high and just do what I want to do. And the vocal parts are like that too. Um, but yeah, man, that was one of the best experiences I could have ever had. Cause Eric taught me so much, man. There was late night talks like about like morbid angel tours when he was on tour with Pantera and fucking motorhead. Yeah, dude. And there was just endless, uh, crazy philosophical banter going back and forth. Like, because what we did was something great those days. So after, you know, we're ch- chilling back and like, damn, man, just start really talking about life. It's tight. Eric's Hell a good yeah, dude man. to chill with. He'll Eric, teach you something. That's Eric is a really good dude. I love that guy. He's super Me too, rare. man. I've, I've, yeah. And I hope times. that, you know, we yeah. grow to, I mean, we already are technically but i'm just saying like grow to be dudes that that pass down knowledge you know this is what we've been through you know and if i ever get into that position where somebody seeks advice or whatever like that's exactly 
what I would want to be is somebody who could be remembered as somebody who taught that person something, you know, Mm. we're small versions of it. I could say that right now, like on the last tour I did, it was apparent that like, I I've gotten older and what we did back then when we were 22, you know, 10 years ago has made an impact because there was a lot of people coming up to me talking about like not even just my band but other bands from back then and so we are kind of that the baby eric's out there i mean if anyone's willing to listen i'm always gonna give them what i think is is like a a decent outlook about the situation if i've been through it so I like because it and it's because we it's because we had the positive mentors that we're talking about right now. Mm-hmm. It, it you know the the mentor you can take it how it you want it. It could be tough, you know. And I've I've I'm, I played football, so I know what a coach is like. Yeah, you know, but you still look back on that coach in hindsight, like that dude toughened me up and taught me certain lessons that actually are key. That's and, exactly it, Eric. Yeah, exactly. dude. And that's what it is, dude. And and in in the moment, certain times you might look at that guy as a fucking asshole. And I'm not yeah. saying that Eric is was or is or maybe he was or not, but I'm just saying that coach that intense. I'm talking about, my coach that I'm talking about specifically was fucking intense too, dude. Yeah. And there was times where I'd be like, oh, fuck this yep. fucking guy, dude. <laughs> but in hindsight, I love it. You know, everything that I got out of that, that point in my life, like it, it all is beneficial to me now still, you know? Yeah. He saw further than you. You just didn't realize mm-hmm. that he was. Mm-hmm. Cause we're young fucks sitting, that, that yeah. didn't even have a fucking fully developed frontal lobe. At the time, <laughs> <you know? laughs> sitting a lot higher than us, man. Eric sits higher than we do. Not in a he's better than us sort of way, but he's definitely more wise than we are. He's, he's seen no things that we'll probably never see. And totally. so every time he said something, I always kind of tried to take it pretty seriously. You know, even if, if it was something small, I was like, okay, noted. noted. Yeah. That's fucking cool, dude. So, have we really talked about how it is in vitriol right now? Like what, no. what's, what's, what's the situation there? Like, how are you digging it? It's awesome. As man. of late. Some chill dudes from Portland chilling um, pretty lax on tour, which I like that. It's like, you know, the set is the brutal part of the day. So that's always good. Pretty uh, chill on the, on the whole schedule, driving, you know, we hit the gym a couple times. That was nice. Try to do that. That's cool, dude. So everybody's kind of being health conscious somewhat on yeah. tour, which is a hard thing to do. It's super hard diet-wise. Yeah. Like Fuck impossible. yeah. It's hard to yeah, be healthy at gas stations, dude. Yeah. No, we're cracking the code, though. We're figuring it out. <laughs> That's yeah. true. Like, <laughs> there, can, there's ways around this, man, to not have to like give in. It, it, it's that it's that gas station craving, like yeah, to eat yeah. the garbage at the gas station. No, it's mm-hmm. hard, bro. I I know you want to go in and like eat it because you know after the set, everyone else goes in and you feel weird for not going in, and mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. you see your friends in there too. So you're like, ah, fuck it, I'll go in the gas station, and then you end up getting some junk, yep. you know, and like it's like fuck, man, like. So totally. it's just hard. It is a it's it's tough. Uh, yeah, the severed tour was like the first tour that I was trying to be conscious, but I still gave. You still give in. Times. You still give <laughs> in. Yeah. Yeah. It's it so hard. Like, yeah, no, I get, you get it. to the gym. It's hard to eat. It's like getting to the gym. Eating that's eating a good one too, dude. Yeah, that's a that's a, a Planet thing. Fitness. That's yeah. the only one that works on tour. That's what's up too, because you could take a shower there too. Hey man, nice uh, showers, <laughs> nice ones. Yeah, <laughs> they're sick. Yeah, and a lot of them don't get any other uh, membership to a gym if you're planning on trying to rip on tour. 
because there was no 24 hour fitnesses compared yeah, to fitnesses. Or all that other stuff. Like, I mean, it's cheap. Club. Yeah. It's like Walmart. There's more of them. It's cheaper. It's simple. It's like, yeah. Fuck it. Fuck <laughs> it. That'd be so sick if you're at like a planet fitness and there's like another death metal band in there at the same time. They're like also on crossing tour. tours. Yeah. It's like <laughs> crossing paths on your fucking tour. Dude, I ran route. it. I ran it too. Decapitated at a guitar center randomly. Oh shit. I'm not even kidding. Just Damn. randomly walked in and they were in there. Nice. I was like, Oh shit. Okay. Uh, I'm cleaning a bunch of shit out right now, dude. I found a uh, winds of creation signed by all of them at that time. They, they did a, a show at the pound. It was like a day festival that, and mm. they were literally teenagers still dude. And I'm a teenager and we, we right. ended up hanging out for like, a, you know, a, a handful of fucking minutes. They signed all our shit. And Dan and I are like, fucking like, dude, this is fucking decapitated. But they're like, they're also like kind of those little, like, teenagers in the back of the crowd like oh, i don't know what to do but then they just right, right, and fucking right. kill it so, dude. So and you're just like what the fuck dude it's crazy Boy wonders yeah i, I that, <laughs> when i found that dude i literally like i jumped up for joy because i didn't know where it was oh, but you I better save I, that don't oh, lose yeah, it dude, no <laughs> doubt dude and the the disc is in mint's condition because i bought two copies bought a, a copy for them to sign and this is my there, little this is a uh, George Coleus. I found this poster that is signed by him. Nice. And I'm actually going to a clinic he's doing here in LA uh, on Valentine's Day uh, during the daytime. You can uh, take your lady. So, so is that guy the fastest <laughs> yeah, so drummer you think for this he's, style of music or not anymore? Well, for, for single strokes. He said not on anymore. Feet. <laughs> on yeah, the feet, for single strokes on the feet, I think. Kalias is the king, kind of. But no one knows if you're doing singles in the. It front. doesn't doesn't matter. It doesn't, so matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. But he is though. He's up there. But Kevin yeah. Paradis is up there too. Yeah, I would oh, say those, Kevin those, and... is that the dude from that one thing you showed me, Joseph? That like crazy guy. It's he's him, scary, and I've dude. I've shown it's... you David Diopold as well. Oh yeah, he's, he's really good. I'd say yeah. those are the two, the two best. Uh, Ken yeah. Bedeen as well, but uh. Yeah. Kalias has been like that guy for like in lo- like you know ten plus years. Or I'd say like yeah. any any like speed increases even on like singles. That's like kind of incremental, but he gave like the biggest push into like the yeah. most developed, mature version of that style. And there's only <sighs> one so one guy to do that. Yeah. You know, it's like the Isaac Newton. After that, you just clean up <laughs> the project. So I mean, I so Chase, that- Chase, Chase, uh, Chase was telling me now that a lot of these uh, younger dudes are doing this uh, double stuff. Well, that's where the it double. All fast, yeah, but everyone's really faster than me fast. now. Everybody's yeah. faster than me. Cheers, but, man! Like, I got like left in the dust. Brilliant. Yeah, no, dude. It, uh, <laughs> no, man, it's cool, man. I, I think it's the evolution. It, it's just a different thing. It's not my style. Doubles. Yeah. I, I, what is that? What is it? Well, it, okay. So, like, if you do, like think of the hands, like, like on your, like on a snare, like if you're doing doubles, yeah. like, like, oh. like, like marching snare, you know. So you do it on your feet because it's like, so like doubles is like two hits with each foot or, I mean, basically that, but just like really fast. The yeah. thing that's crazy about doubles is you have the swivel, yeah. which can stand alone right. on one foot. You have the push pull, which no one can do, which stands alone on the foot. Doubles doesn't. You have to have this guy to have this guy. Yeah. Which is where I'm afraid to start well, diving in. But man, I swear I'm saying this like publicly. <laughs> I might have to do it. I might have to. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to, man. But we were I'm, talking I'm we were talking to Tim Young about tough, it. I, I thought it was a good conversation about that. And uh Tim Young was like, uh, it's like you have to like adjust your your head, like your bass drum head and and, and your beater and certain things yeah. to like work well for the doubles and stuff. And like, uh, so see that doesn't. I don't know, Dan. Let me get two cool. sets of pedals. Two sets yeah. of pedals. Yeah. 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 Ain't yeah. Super <laughs> down. yeah. Yeah. Dude, just get four bass but, drums, dude. Yeah. Four <laughs> bass drums. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Like, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> For, hey, you like know what though, me, man? It's, I feel yeah, the same whatever, way about dude. like modern guitar players. Though. It's like a lot of like yeah. insane dudes doing like 
yeah. double speed shit and all this crazy ass shit. It's still it's really like, sick. It's still fucking badass. Yeah, nah, hey, 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 no, we're not hating at all. It's just the evolution yeah. of it, you know. Like, you have to do it well. And yeah, when yeah. you do, exactly, it's yeah. terrifying, man. Doubles are fucked when you do it well. Yeah, and yeah. people are killing them now, man. Like Fuck I remember yeah. when people first started doing doubles, it wasn't like this. No. Now people sound better like mm-hmm. live. I'm like, oh shit, this is fucked up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> clean, clean, I told you exactly. It's clean, dude. That's what where I'm yeah. like. People have mastered it. It's insane. And John from Origin was like right, John. I was gonna say really from Origin. early yeah. dudes. I remember hearing John's that he man. learned doubles, and I was like, why? It's like he's like, like the wow. fastest yeah, exactly. dude anyway. I know, I know, I know, I know. But now he's even faster. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Now he's even faster, dude." I I toured That's with true. Origin, and I oh, said yeah. this to John. I no. said, "You have a gospel drummer's arms with like robot legs, like because he's yeah. real tasty on the top, man." Oh, dude, oh, totally. <laughs> Oh, I love that dude. Real tasty on the top, dude. <laughs> That's the best. He's real- rub it, rub yeah, it out, top, man. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah. John Longstreth is like one of my longtime heroes and a great friend. And dude, that He's guy awesome. is so fucking. I have endless stories, dude. That, that guy is so fucking sick. And uh, yeah, dude. It, 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 like I remember him. Uh, what was that like? That that origin album it was like I I I or whatever the infinite. Mm-hmm, the, mm-hmm. the, and like yeah and it, that that when that album came out that for all of us who we were just like jaws like dropped like what the fuck is this like oh my god like game changer you know which so, album in infinitus blah 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 like i i i whatever it was that is that the album. really early one yeah well, it was like before, the 2000s well, the second yeah it's the second early one. 2000s it was that's like, the one before the one with the burner on it yeah yeah. He's talking about informis, infinitas, inhumanitas. Yes. And then it was it Echoes of Decimation. That's yep. the one that, that I was. Well, that was with, with King, like on drums after James that. Oh, yeah, what was, you're right. what was uh, but inform infinitus was the one before that. What? Yeah, what 2002. 2002. 2002. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, when the, so we were freaking out about that when it came out. You know? Yeah. Oh, I bet. <clears throat> but like, I I remember like like stories of him being like like oh I just couldn't feel like comfortable on the kick drums like like doing like like single strokes or something like that speed or something like like i don't know he, he like basically he he was al- already looking for a technique that could make his his kicks like way more fast can, like like mind-boggling fast kind of like perfect you know yeah um, and so yeah i remember that and then i was like oh that's crazy and then like of course james king did you know uh was it echoes yeah. yeah, it goes. Yeah, then like the, then Longstreth came back, and all of a sudden he like figured out the doubles thing, and it was like so early on. Like I don't even know if he was doing it. Like when we played with them in the St. Louis, like God, what was that? Two thousand six, uh, uh, like on, on on the Bloodletting tour that we did. Um, I think he was like already doing the doubles, like back yeah. then. That it was like, and he had the long, he was, like one of the, the yeah, long board like, pedals mm-hmm. that he was doing. He, and he was playing this like crazy like kit that night. It was like, it was like he was like telling me it was like um like, like surfboard like what it's called like uh like fiberglass or, or whatever it's called. <laughs> it's like yeah, made out of like you know the, the crazy shit. So some some drum set he was playing, but uh yeah, but like I don't know what it was like. There like still back in those days, like he he was doing those. He was like wanting to do those doubles and like wanting to play like super fast, like with like a different technique, like, like kicks, you know, he knew what was coming. Yeah. Yeah. So you, like, I, you... I've always thought of John as that, like kind of innovator for, for me. Like in that, yeah. in that kind of thing, you know, what were you saying? Just... I was just going to say like, once you get that double, like roll going with your feet, like it's just such a fun motion to like, feel the 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 bounce back off mm-hmm. of the beater when you have it like the heads perfectly fit to it and i've only figured it out on like a kick drum that isn't even my main kick drum but like when i got it going i'm like holy shit this is sick like it just feels so fun and uh oh, I, I don't know man like uh, people have strong opinions on it and uh i don't know man once you just you got to feel it out and see what you can do with it and that takes a lot of years of practice getting there so mm-hmm. yeah 
Is there any like trick techniques that make guitar players shred faster? Um. <laughs> oh man. Well, <laughs> there's two of them. But there's there's a cheater way, and then there's like. I don't know. Okay, definitely there's a huge thing for just like how there's quantizing on um, kicks. You can do that with the guitar. Like you can basically like, and this is all the bands, bro. Any modern band, I'm going to call them out. I don't even have to say names. Just any modern new band is taking, especially like metal, death metal, any that type only of shit. Only metal. What do you mean? Yeah. Metal does it. <laughs> yeah, only metal usually. I, yeah, I don't know if any of it, else. Hey, maybe other no, people no are. No other genres quantizing drums, man. It's real. Oh, no, 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 no. I was saying guitar quantizing No, I know guitar. you know. Yeah. I already know you Probably know. Not, it's usually only metal where you're basically mm -hmm. playing one note. Yep. Let's say you're doing a riff, right? And it's like, do, 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 right? So they're going to do each note. Do, 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 do. But have the guy then, play it. Yeah. And yeah, play each oh. note individually. Then what they do, the recording guy in the studio plays it back, mm. right? Full speed. And it goes. Mm. So like. Basically, you sound like you're doing these insanely, like, clean, technical ass, like, oh, you know what I mean? Like, God, God, oh, godly riffs. Yeah. And, and you're no, basically that's just playing plain old fucking bullshit. No, like, it's, dude, hey, man, I ain't going to say this. There's some famous guitar players that, that I've recorded at the same studio as them, and they told me about this. The producer, they are individually playing the notes. Yes, I've heard this. Time. They've done it with drums too. They yep, do the yeah, one at a time. Snare, you know, and then they do the doo, symbols. Doo, and this doo, and that. Yep. And then all together, it's like, you know, mm. and it sounds like that's why these and then, bands, and then you go see a band live and you're like, it sounds nothing the same. Not every band, you know what well, I mean? As but a like, musician, you think that, but then the modern average person doesn't, doesn't know. know. Doesn't know, yeah. That's yeah, an that's a secret. To get man. away with it forever. Hey, I gave away a secret right there about guitar players, metal guitar players. Yep, that's we wild. we all I've heard do something it. about that. Mm -hmm. And and uh, the, a lot of times, man, it's the guy in the studio telling you to do it because he says like it sounds cleaner this way. I got in an argument with a guy once uh, that was recording in the studio. A famous dude who's done some bands. Even he was telling me he's like, no, you got to do it this way and quantize the guitar hits it sounds way better he's like i don't want you just playing it normal and i was like but then that's like taking out the mm -hmm. the here you know what I'm saying? Like, performance like, over perfection man. it's like edm it's like edm for metal it's like it, it has to be like precisely yeah. like insane because because now like modern kids a lot of them not not everybody but small groups like that robotic sound oh, you know, a the lot fake. of people like that dude. yeah a lot yeah they people, want the man. fake robotic like really really insane sound and like only quantized sound can get that the That's human like split thing yeah it's yeah like human can't death play metal, like that half modern mm -hmm. like because there's mm -hmm. a lot of true death metal fans and it i was reminded of that on this last tour i was like this is for real like death metal like this is not like some um i don't know how to say it but like a hype thing you know like even though there were a good mix of bands you know terror was on it dude they're they're hype in a good way like they they mm -hmm. have a lot mm -hmm. of hype like they had a lot yeah. of people coming super sick um but yeah it was very death metal because it was dying fetus headlining on the on the last one that i did so yeah, it reminded dude. me it's a split there's the modern. Oh, and you said that band. Mm -hmm. What were they no. called? Um, there, there was a um brand of sacrifice. Remember them? Super clean, dude. Modern hype though, like in the, in a good way too. Like, brand of sacrifice. They sounded just yeah. like, so good. That's what I'm man. telling you. Those are like those Shout new bands, to... those new younger bands. Yeah. Shout outs to my homies for ripping that, and shout outs to my homie Alex Kendrick for the sound because it was goddamn near perfect, like every day. I was like, this is this is nutty. Mike Caputo on the doubles. Fuck, man. Yeah, Mike is sick. He's scary, dude. He's yeah. so good, man. Yeah. And he was like doubling and tripling parts on the on some breakdowns and some other things. And I was like, okay, this is fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's some new I, school shit. He's rad. Yeah, dude. Yeah. He just, uh, um, 
Yo, what's up? But yeah, to answer the question, yeah, that's that's how guitars can can sound faster in the studio. Now live is where you get yeah, exposed. Yeah, my my actually my question was like, so the double technique on the feet is that is there a version of that for a guitar player? That I mean, no, but I would see what that would be. That would be called backtracks. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so there is none because you can't just like. You can't do the Paul yeah. from Origin thing where he just goes. <laughs> like only he yeah, can. You can't. Nah, you he can't, does the uh, Jedi grind, dude. Yeah, dude. He like grind. flips his fucking hand oh. sideways and just like. That's Mike Gilbert style, too, from shit. Sever. That, that fucking Jedi. That's what they call it. The it's kind of funny. Grind. Like now, a lot of metal, I feel like the drums are more insane in certain bands than the guitars. Well, you know, the guitars are going to be with double strokes like you can get to these tempos. I mean, because, dude, the thing is that's scary about it is if a lot of people learn doubles, then we're all going to like be at like this really close tempo cap. Like, yeah, everybody's going to be able to do it now. Like everybody's going to be able to hit like 280, 290, 300. Well, there's only a few people that, man, I'm, I'm not even near no 300 BPM, man. I point. think I'm comfortable at like 250 or something or, or something mm-hmm. like that. So there's mm-hmm. only yeah. a few people that do singles that are at like 300. So the thing that's crazy is like, it's going to become more kind of like guitar where I feel like the hands are going to have to speak more for us because we're going to all sound a little more, on that same level where we're gonna have to work harder to differentiate ourselves i uh that's a good point as i get older too i pay attention to all that uh tastiness up top as you uh yes i want to say i think you made a really good point I, i i think as like a like a like a drum recording goes and everything like all the expression as a drummer comes out from the hands like like, yeah. like like the kicks are like complimenting that and making it sound like heavy and stuff and like whatever but like and your you, feel the way the yeah exactly with the dynamics of dun, 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 bah, you know and you hit like a snare like a certain like you know crash kind of hit like that's like your expression that's my expression mm-hmm. yeah drums, you know and all so, your fills that's how you differentiate yourself yep. because you have to play computer drum parts which is ah. fucking shit, man. Yeah. If I, okay, let's put it this way: if I could write computer yeah. guitars for Ghosts of the mm. Universe, that would be <laughs> that'd be pretty tight if it was classical guitars. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm not. We don't really have a uh, distortion shit, but I would probably do it too. So mm. I can't hate. Like I like that there's a vision for the songs that I learn. I like that I have a direction because sometimes. Mm-hmm. what the hell am i gonna do breakdown or a blast beat i don't know which to do right now you could do mm-hmm. whatever uh so i don't know it's i'm like losing where i was at but <laughs> the nah, writing thing changing. with the computer thing like i can't hate on it too much but it it is different rutan said performance over perfection i'll never forget that and uh that basically means like the energy over the quantizing, mm-hmm. you know, the human energy over the perfect part. Like, yeah, get that. I'll take it that way first and foremost, too, dude. I'll take it the other way, but I, that that's my first choice right there. What you just said, performance. Yeah, mine over. too. I like the yeah. energy and like all the bands that I like. Like Rob was making fun of me one time in the car. We were rolling somewhere, and he was like, "I see why you like Opeth so much." It, it's a real band and i was cracking up and i was like yep yeah, it's all the amps like they don't do any fakery on stage oh yeah i was just saying the they're amps. Tracks, like yeah they're not using real, my dude all of it's for real oh, and they yeah. sound great i seen them once and uh oh my god dude the, the old song sounded fat the new song sounded super dope and surfy proggy and so mm. and it's hard to get that in this day and age with a new band because everybody's chasing a backtrack setup which even i am i mean i'm prepared to go out there and have some too i don't care yeah um, it makes you um, sound cleaner man yeah it does. It's, it's like people now want more you can even tell like 
kids, you can tell they just want to hear instead of like this amps and you know amps and guitar and the bass ain't just enough now you gotta have the no they want production the, they're i have more production up. they want a movie down there you know what i'm saying like we're educating which is fine you know it is what it is it evolves with the time you can't you can't hate it and totally. i want to bring it I mean, back yeah though. dude yeah i was just gonna say we're we're sounding like those guys are like these kids these young yeah. kids these days oh i feel like that <laughs> well yeah. you know, it, sucks, oh, man. It, it, it sucks to say because it's like what it is true though you could see you know the difference in like play i mean i'm sure these guys feel that way with the drums you know what i mean like you see but you, but you are you already know the real real talent and skills shines through all that doesn't yeah, matter what time totally, period. dude. And I also think that just in general to say like why people do these kids these days talks is because yeah. of, of how things get ingrained in us in our adolescence and, you know, our early mid development to where we finally, you know, cap out as an adult and we coast that out for the rest of our lives. But there's like a certain section where things just happen and then things get ingrained and then it gets sealed up and then after that we're fight we see the new shit coming and we're like no nah, that's not how it's supposed to be done you know yeah it's the true. shit that i already yeah. fucking you know knew what is right and what is wrong in my mind and, and it's just like no nah, dude shit's always gonna evolve and i'm i'm happy with it, how everything moves you know it's, it's true for the most part yeah for the most part as long as is it's bringing people together and, and we're still having these discussions and, and, and how you say that the gimmick of death metal isn't there. It's like, it's a real thing when you go to these shows, you know, it's like, yeah. that's all it that really matters to me, dude, is that new kids are catching on and they're taking it and they're running with it, you know? Yeah. Like we did, happening. like Real, with, we nice did, thing. you know, yeah. we took it. Hey, we yeah, said it, man, it. 10 years. I knew it. It's going to take 10 years. Like, from back when even when Jason w was playing you know what I mean like I feel like there was a 10-year thing and like now metal is even like bigger it than evolved. it was like it's it is new bands new sick hype drummers man yeah it's 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 bigger than it was definitely real, like totally I, hell I mean there's even like I'll say this much people used to say this I, I believe it now. There's even more women that are into metal than there was before. I feel oh, like way more, most dude. definitely way yes. More. When 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 I was younger, it used to be like EDM and all this, and now it's like girls will be liking metal, man. Dudes totally. will be liking parents, families cool. will like metal. Mm -hmm. that You'll see kids with the little kids. <laughs> It's, yeah, me, dude. You're old, it's dude. me it's That's me it I'm, I'm i'm exposing my children to metal dude yeah well, you know obviously doing it too. I, but you know what's funny is that i know how to <coughs> i know how to give it to them i'm not going to just throw cannibal corpse on oh nah, no I'm, I'm gonna ease them into it with some <laughs> pantera or some slag you know or metallica or even, whatever you know, yeah take <gasps> it even further back and just put on black sabbath just let them that's true let them feel the groove of black Sabbath and what blues turned into rock and roll sounds like, you know, and, yeah. and just get, cause that, that really is how I became a listener. My, of how I am today is, is the gradual, just going deeper and deeper gradually, not, not getting everything thrown on the platter. And I'm, I'm supposed to be like, what the fuck am I supposed to do with this? It yeah, just came to me. It was, it was like an IV drip. You yeah. Know? And it's hard to be honest with yourself when too much is. Yeah, weird. totally dude. What and, like? and, and also another thing too, it's actually, it's exciting to say this cause I haven't said it in a while. So all you longtime listeners have heard me say this, but it's like, uh, uh, a software situation like we got a hard drive and and you get something new that you haven't listened to before it comes with new software well when we're listening to it it may not click because the software is being downloaded into our hard drive but if you go back to it after that and listen to it again now you got the new software in the hard drive it will be different you might experience it differently you might understand it and there's tons of those bands where you listen to it for the first time you're like what the fuck is this 
and then a few more listens, you're like, this is the best shit ever. Yeah, it takes five to six listens, they say, to know if you love a song or hate a song. And it actually hit me with Ariana Grande. I fucking hated it at first. My EJ was playing it in the van. <laughs> and like the fifth time, I was like, it's starting to bob your head to it. And then, yep. Yeah, all right. I was yeah, like, damn. damn. Totally, dude. Man, a lot of times, music is like it. beer. A lot of I'm telling you. You yeah. get it. Yeah. Acquire a couple taste. times, you're like, it's whack. <laughs> and then that happens that, with you're my order and the, only the that. Stuff. Yeah. Like at first, right, it, my dad will show me some jazz stuff, and I don't really, I'm, I don't know what the hell I'm doing or listening for. So I don't really get it. And then by like fourth listen, I gravitate to things and like, I like jazz a lot because of him. Like, I don't even listen to much metal, really. I feel out of the loop. I'm, like, more on, like, this post-prog, like, almost dad rock shit. It's so funny. I, I, I feel old. <laughs> nah, dude, I'm with you, dude. I, I rarely listen to metal right now. I listen to tons. I, actually, I listen to jazz. I listen to, I've said it so many times, avant-garde shit. I like yeah. hip-hop. I oh, like... Yeah. You know, I'm listening to, you know, jazz piano a lot, dude. Like, that's really good shit to listen to with your kids because it's like it's a a thing that can be accepted across the board if, you know, like, because even they're into certain metal songs, but like, obviously, it's, they, they can only take it in small doses. So it's that's like, true. all right, let's put on some other technical shit that you don't yeah, really jazz, understand that is technical. Yeah. They won't, yeah, they don't know any better. And really, who's it's your like, favorite piano player? A jazz piano player. Um, besides I Herbie Hancock, we all love Herbie, Herbie Hancock. But. Yeah. Well, uh, he's not really, I mean, I guess he's jazz. Uh, he does a lot of jazz. Medeski, what's his name? Medeski, that dude does a lot of like jazz. Um, this game, Martin and Wood, that picker. yeah, but it's not, he yeah. doesn't play piano, he plays what's what is it, the organ? It's more like an organ mm. style shit, different instrument, honestly. It's a totally different approach. Like, if you're a pianist or an organist, oh, yeah, so for that's, sure, that's valid. Yeah, uh, I like Bill Evans a lot, he's insane. Man. I'd just been discovering Bill Evans on YouTube, I didn't know about him, but he's like. My yeah. God, man. Who's that dude? Uh, Tigran Hama. How do I say his last name? Tigran. Hamasian. Hamasian. Yeah. yeah. You guys listen to that dude. Oh, yeah. I've heard him actually from. Yeah, Scott, dude. Um, Nate from Ontogeny turned me on to that shit. And uh, his album, Mock Root, is a fucking just front to back banger of melancholy, uplifting, crazy jazz piano. Mashuga influenced at times. That's tight. Even lists Mashuga as an influence. You're like, dude. And the, there's some there's some breakdowns. We just said that earlier. Yeah. And you yep. know some breakdown. There's some breakdowns in there where you're totally like, this could totally be translated into a Mashuga song, you know, That's and we're tight. perfect. So there's a, a that band's that influence a lot of people. Yeah, there's Hell a yeah, sick dude, dude uh, called Eldar Jangirov. And he's actually in a project with the animals as leaders drummer. And then oh, the, the bass player from Dirty Loops, this, this band from Sweden, that's really, really, really sick jazz band. And uh, they do some really weird shit. It's like weird, like diminished, like strange, weird, dark, quirky chord with like Matt Garska, like ripping groove shit, but then this sick bass player, dude, and it's just them three. I think it's called Gem. Yeah. They're really sick. So, uh, yeah, that's that's been a dude that's been killing it lately for like the new school. Chick Korea will always be to me the greatest yeah. jazz pianist or keyboardist of all time. Sucks yeah. Just died. Like, for sure. Kind of recently. Yeah. I going through shit. I just came across a couple of his records too. Yeah, what was it To the Stars? That was actually Oh yeah, Chick yeah. Corea and the Electric Band. That's yeah. That, that was actually I got into him late and that was actually the first record I got of his and I I and it was because I was at Yoshi's in San Francisco. I was about to see uh 
Aldimiola. Oh, and shit. but but Yoshi's is like a restaurant slash venue. So the front's the restaurant, dope sushi. It's closed now. But um Damn. then you go past the restaurant, and then there was this spot where you either show your ticket or buy a ticket, but there was also a listening station. So we were waiting for the doors to open and I'm just like listening to random shit. And I came across Chikoria. That's the way like listening to random shit in a record store too. Like that That's isn't funny. a thing anymore for people, I anymore, know, you man. know, like just putting so, on a pair of headphones and actually finding something. The- nope. Yeah. I don't really nope. like this. I, I don't know, man. I don't like the Spotify. No, I don't like all this man. app crap. Like it, and I hate to sound like, like you said, like an old head or something. But oh, I, I don't CD, even, man, put it on your phone. No, dude, I literally, <laughs> I, I go and throw all my shit. I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm about to dump all these CDs in my, the, my, because I, I've had this computer, but yeah. I, I didn't do the whole experience of putting all my shit on the computer. But I'm like, my iPod still works, <laughs> dude. I'm like, I got. Yeah, I don't, play. I don't like the playlist stuff they suggest to you, like. No. Suggest this playlist, oh. like, no. like the, it's I, a I, diet like, version of who you're listening to. Yeah. Right? So why are you sending me a half-assed version of Opeth when I want to hear Opeth? Yeah. It. it uh, I don't know, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm iffy about it. For sure. But, I, I mean, it does do have it, some good. Because the thing is, like, it was fun making back, your own playlists, dude. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's, I make my own YouTube playlists, and they're fat, like hundred <laughs> songs <laughs> playlists. And uh, I, I don't even listen to them that much, but still they're there. So yeah. in case, but yeah, the thing, the good thing I was going to say about Chick Korea is he's on like, don't quote me hundreds of records. I, I don't know. It seems like uh, he's played with fucking everyone. Return to forever is a band that I used to listen to a lot. Oh yeah. And so sick, dude. Lenny yeah. white on drums. My God. And so like, when he died, I guess I was just thinking, like, at least he did a lot of work. That dude yeah, worked dude. hard. He, he, he's he going to live tired. on. He's going to live on for a long time in people's in the zeitgeist. Yeah, dude. He's, he's got uh, so many examples of him putting his print, you know. Yep. yep. And he ripped so shit. hard, and he's done so many crazy things on record, like that we can enjoy. So. Totally. That you just made me think of somebody who isn't it, it, as crazy because they're just uh, rhythms of reggae, but Sly and Robbie. I think they got like they're on their rhythms are on over like two hundred thousand songs. Oh my god! That have been recorded. That's prolific as fuck. So crazy, right? And and nobody even knows the name Sly and Ravi, but it's oh. like any but anytime you listen to reggae, like the rhythm is pretty much something they came up with, dude. Damn. Wild shit. That's crazy. All right, dudes. Well, I think I gotta fucking turn it in, dude. It's almost one for o'clock sure. for me <laughs> tomorrow. Right, dude, we're gonna we almost made it to three night. hours. Don't start this one late. Uh, you guys I'm don't. Joke, no, listeners no. don't know. We started this at ten uh, after ten p.m. Probably like ten thirty. We started recording. For sure. That's but, yeah, uh, dude. This was super <laughs> sick, dude. Thank you yeah, so much for hanging out with us, guys. Thank you. Yeah, that was great. Appreciate you guys, man. That was and really you guys great. are always welcome back too. Like we. Work out another fucking episode where we just kick it, dude, and do the same shit. Yeah. Like a, yeah. a lot of this episode was just bullshit, and then you guys are fucking good at it. So I, you're always welcome <laughs> back, dude. <laughs> for sure. Well, thank you guys for having us, and uh, it's been super sick. See you on tour. I hope have to kick it in person too, man. Get you guys no doubt, dude. Yeah, yeah you definitely. guys come through the bay, or yeah. if I'm down in San Diego somehow, some way, we'll. And, and, and we'll figure it out, dude. I want to. I want to meet a ton of people, dude. I want to get out there and fucking go to shows again, dude. And um, yeah, school. yeah, yeah. Hopefully, all that cracks this coming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. I'll definitely see Chase and yeah. roll through on that defeated sanity tour. Um, sure. Hell that's yeah! Got, is that fun, coming man. through the bay? Did we already? Yeah, that's that, that X Bar show. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Patino. Oh, that place is all right. I played there. That's that's a high place. We can go bowling. Oh, yeah. Shit. All right. That's where I played uh, with Jason last time we is played that together. A weekend deal? Uh, it's too far ahead for me to know that. Oh, but uh, okay. the tour starts in like a month down in San Diego, and then it like 
finishes after a month later in like Northern California. So yeah, Cupertino is the 24th of March. Yeah. yeah. All right. We'll figure out what day that is. Oh, as damn, soon. It's going to be March already. That's crazy. Okay. Yeah, dude. Yeah. You guys want to plug anything before we leave out out of here? Merch, fucking websites, Instagrams, fucking all that shit. Plug it, Rob. Hit it real quick. <laughs> uh well me and him uh my instagram's uh x king of shred x and then his is uh chasing west i mean he already said his project you know goes to the universe um uh right now i mean i have mine like i said uh just kind of um looking to play for different musicians stuff like that um seeing what's out there we're looking to expand collab you know so we never stop playing or writing music I feel like neither of us, we're always looking for, you know, the next, uh, next sound, next hit, next thing to do. We're always busy. Uh, he offers lessons. I do lessons too. So we're always busy. We do music for work, man. You know, that's, totally. that's how we, uh, get stuff done during, even during this pandemic, me and him have just been doing music, uh, getting gigs, um, Doing songs you know, for people. We, we songs for people, of, yeah. Ghost writing, studio, you know. Um, lessons, like I said, that's all been. So um, uh, me and him both have YouTubes too. Same thing. You can look us up. Chase and Wes. Uh, you can find mine off my Instagram, uh, the King of Shred. So either one, man. You know, and uh, I don't know. My opinion, I had a great time on the show. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. Okay. Well. <laughs> we had a great time having you guys, dude, for sure. Thank you, man. Let's uh, trade contacts and shit uh, post pod and all that. But uh, let's uh, plug Battle for or your show one more time, Joseph. You want to say it one more time? Oh, yeah. If, if you're listening and you got this far in the podcast, the show's probably happened by now. But uh, if, you, <laughs> if you started and finished this three hour episode all in Friday, January 21st, and it's not yet 10 30 p.m roll over to Southgate. <laughs> I don't know the, uh, Oh, the venue is called fuck. What's it called? God damn. The hound. I think it's called something like the hound bar. So just All Google right. last Lucy. You'll see the show. So fuck yeah. Last Lucy. Yeah. All right, guys. Battleforgecoffee.com. Go get your fucking caffeine fix over there. Quality shit. Homies and deeds of flesh. Love them. Uh, thank you to all the subscribers. Thank you to everybody who came for this episode for the first time hopefully you had a good time um we'll be here next week as always uh plus another resident homie hopefully joel coming back uh but yeah guys have a great weekend and uh we'll talk to you soon rock on hey